All right. Tuesday night, special version. We're not on a Wednesday night. We're jumping nights. Hopefully we're not stepping over the serious angler too bad tonight. But uh, we're going to talk smallmouth. We're going to have some fun tonight. And it uh, looks like we got a crowd rolling in here to talk smallmouth tonight. What's going on, Hayden? A whole lot. Ready to talk about some smallmouth. Yeah. Uh, Molly's ready to talk about that. Yeah, it's always a good time. Smallies. Darius wouldn't miss a Smalley show. That's for sure. That um, kind of guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a big uh, Kentucky Lake smallmouth guy. I don't know if you've ever been. Uh, no, I've never. I've driven past it. I actually drove past it one time when there was ice on some of the creeks. <laughs> nice. Probably been the perfect time to go catch some smallies out there. Yeah, it's not exactly bonus Tuesday. This is in replace of the Wednesday. I'm fishing a uh, high school pro am tomorrow night on a local lake, and uh, we're gonna get go out and fish uh, with a high school kid in a little tournament on a local <laughs> lake, and that should be fun. Not a lake that I love, but it'll be fun getting out. <clears throat> so that's why we're moving it tonight. And then kids soccer on uh, on Thursday night. So what up, Bateman? Lots of familiar faces. How's the sound and audio? Uh, everybody watching, let us know. Uh, yeah, Kentucky Lake Smallies. It sounds like Kentucky Lake's really like making a comeback, Smalley wise. So, like they've. Uh, They've uh, filled the niche, like so, kind of the carp and the pressure and the lack of grass, the kind of everything, kind of dip. But the small eyes are kind of like finding their way now on uh, Kentucky right. Lake. Right. Almost like everything else got cleared out enough where they had a fighting chance for a little while, started populating a lot more. Glad you can make it, Robert. Yeah. So we're gonna talk smallies, uh, a bunch of few other things, and uh, should be a good time. So. Hayden, you, uh, why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself, where, where you're from and, and what you're up to and, and why you love Smalley so darn much. Yeah, so I'm from Poplar, Wisconsin. I'm sure absolutely nobody knows where that is. It's kind of by, um, yeah, yeah, so I don't know. It's all turned around with the camera. I'm not going to be able to explain that well, but it's kind of by Duluth, Minnesota. I'm like a half hour away, so everybody east, should know where that Wisconsin is. East, Wisconsin from Duluth. Yep, yeah. exactly, east right across the bridge. Um. I guess the reason I really got into smallmouth probably is just because like a lot of the lakes around me, oddly enough, don't have a lot of them, like the ones really close to me. So it was always like that mystery factor. Like when you would see one or would randomly catch one, it was like you want more of what you can't have, I guess. So I always kind of gravitated towards them. And then just the older I got and the more experience I got with them, I just kind of meshed with those a lot more. Or I guess I was always more entertained by those than largemouth. Still love largemouth, but the smallies are king for me. <clears throat> sure. Cool. And I, like I think we can... a lot more. What's that? No, sorry. I I, just, I like I like the wide array of techniques. I guess. Definitely. He's not afraid to pick up a spinning rod. Is what he's trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Rody? Topwater says close to yep, close to Superior. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I actually work in Superior. There you go. And so, speaking of work, you've also ambitiously now started up a, a guide service as well. So, you uh, where do you yeah. all guide up in uh, up in Wisconsin? There. So, kind of all over. I fish a lot of the lakes within an hour of poplar i guess so 20 minutes east of superior is poplar um and yeah so anything about an hour away mainly for like the smallmouth stuff be like hayward wisconsin um I'm sure a lot of people probably are familiar with that area there's tons and tons of lakes right there that have smallmouth in them lots of good largemouth too and uh other than that i mean some of the lakes for largemouth are you know, around Iron River area, if anyone knows where that is, um, South Range. It's those are all areas that only people that uh, live close to here are probably gonna know. But yeah, lots of lakes close by. <clears throat> right on. My dogs are going crazy, so we're trying to <laughs> assemble the kids upstairs to try to to quiet there them down. So they get so much background. <clears throat> So how many 
you got a few openings for people that are like if they want to go fishing up in the northern Wisconsin, do you get a lot of people like that uh, like come up for their cabin and they want to get out for a day or two or like what kind of what's typical? Yeah, I mean, I just started it this spring and honestly, I've been so busy with different tournaments and stuff so far in May. And then, I mean, it's just getting to be June now. So um, I do, I, I honestly, have, I'd have to look at a calendar to look at what I actually have available, but I kind of just play it by ear. So if someone's got a date in mind and I'm able to make it work, then we make it work. It's uh, at least for the first year or two here, it's I'm getting married this summer too. So like, it's a busy summer. I don't have a ton of availability. So it's just kind of, I wanted to get it rolling. It was, a, I had a good opportunity to kind of get the ball rolling this winter. So I started it up and taking a few people out so far this spring and caught them pretty good, but it's been a so couple it's kind of a slow, it's a rolling start. It's kind of like a, yeah. a, a beta not, test year, kind of like not going hard, just kind of. Yeah, exactly. I'm not trying to get like super busy because I still like, you know, going fishing with all my buddies. I still don't get to go fishing with all the buddies I want to every year, but I uh, feel like the guiding thing was a a good opportunity for me to be, me to be able to justify fishing a lot more, you know? It was just well, an excuse to get a, a bigger boat, let's be honest. Yeah, right. Yeah, I got a, I got a boat payment too here to, to take care of, but yeah, I mean, especially try to pay for some gas this summer too. It don't seem like it's going down anytime soon, so it's all being put towards something yeah absolutely yeah so john poxy's heading out to lake oahe next week that should be exciting you ever been out there i have not been anywhere close to there but it sounds like a blast everybody i've heard talk about it sounds says they sounds like you're fishing on the moon it is a little bit like you feel like you're in the yellowstone a little bit kind of like you're out there like it's definitely western like desolate and uh it's interesting. Like there's, I mean, there's not a stitch of grass. It's very, right. like, it looks very Western, like Canyon lakes, like what you'd expect to see in like Arizona and stuff like that. It's, it's sure. much different than anything that we fish around here. Yeah. Um, it's got, it's got big ones. That's for sure. So it should be a really good event. <clears throat> I think there's some qualifiers coming out there and I don't know if that's what John is fishing. And then obviously the leads are coming out there in a, in a, a month or two. Right. Probably a good time to go fish it before it gets blown up by the elites. <laughs> Try to get to it before all the pressure gets there. Yeah, that is, but there's not, the thing is, it's kind of like, it's probably a little bit like Amistad back in the day, right? Where like Del Rio wasn't a very big town and like, it's yeah, like well, there's not like, you know, I, I mean, there are a few resorts and there are a few hotels yeah. and a few campgrounds and stuff, but it's not like it has the infrastructure where like, yeah, you're going to get flooded point. big time and it's far enough out there. You're likely not going to make a day trip, you know, especially from Minnesota or Minneapolis or anything like that. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. I fished a TBF out there. And we were out of the other end, <clears throat> and now they're going out of a new end. Uh, so, it'll, I'll it'll see you went out of the end that the elites went out of when they were there previous. Yeah, yeah. The end that, kind of by the dam. Yeah, sure. And that according to everybody is the end that sucked. <laughs> well, I mean, not as good. As, it's not less as good. good. And, yeah. Sure. Okay. No, yeah, I'm excited like to follow that one. That one's gonna be good. Colorado State qualifier that they're gonna have out there. What's <laughs> up, Pete? Cheers, buddy. Looks like you were uh, watching Seth bedfish off his motor today based on your yeah. Instagram. I saw that. That was pretty funny. I have fished the ecstasy. It's pretty sweet. Got a video coming out on that pretty soon. Enjoying it so far. Well, here's a question that probably uh, Hayden can tackle. He says, uh, Round Lake Knee Hayward. Is that, I guess that's where your tournament's coming up that you have? That's actually exactly where my tournament's coming So you've got some. So I'm not going to uh, touch too much on that. <laughs> So after um, they leave the, maybe just in general, when they leave well, the yeah, bed, no, what I'll, do you start looking for? Bit. Yeah. So, I mean, at least the last couple of years, that time of year on round, they are almost not even on bed. So start looking post bond stuff. I mean, it there, if you really looked hard, I'm sure you'd find a few cause it's clear lake. So I'm sure there's still going to be some lingering, but I don't think, uh, I, to like, I don't know if he's fishing the tournament or what, but like, I, I don't think that's going to be like your winning technique or your winning pattern is locating bedding fish. Cause they're so unpredictable that time of year. Anyways, you know, they could be there, you know, the day before you know, at four o'clock and then not be there when you go to check on it right away in the morning. So. Sure. But I mean like in that lake, what I mean, like when they go off the beds, what are you looking for? Like, <clears throat> is it a rock lake? Is it a grass lake? Like what, 
what, what so kind of? Yeah, it's got both, and they fish use a lot of rock, a lot of sand, some grass. Um, I just try to look at areas where they spawned and expand from there, see what, you know, see exactly what stage they are in. And then if I got to go deep or stay shallow, kind of go from there. So basically if they're <clears throat> go where you're finding the empty beds and then just think, where are they going to stop on their way out? Yeah, exactly. Jason to that. And probably cover water, you know, uh, jerk baits, swim baits, get them to show themselves, slow down, throw a drop shot, Ned. Pretty basic right. stuff. Imagine. Exactly. Oh, that's a bummer. But glad you got, they got you hooked up right away. So what's what's going on in your neck of the woods right now? What are the fish doing? Are they still pre-spawn? Are they kind of on beds? Like, what are you seeing up, uh, up where yeah, you are? They're, they're pretty much locked on beds right now. So it's like my least favorite time of the year. I hate bed fishing it's not like it's a hard thing to do everybody knows smallmouth are extremely stupid on beds i just it's kind of why i hate it because <laughs> it's like you could throw a lug nut on your fishing line in there and you're, you're gonna catch it so i just so. that's just my personal opinion it doesn't bother me that people go and do it i know it bothers some people but like if you want to go do it that's fine i just prefer to catch them in any other way so sure. i try that's to just, just what'd you say I was going to say, especially up where you are, where they don't get pressured, they're really dumb on beds, right? right like yeah, when you exactly. go to Mille Lacs and you get around the metro. Yeah, you been... go try to catch the ones that have already been stabbed six times in a day. Yeah. yeah. Th those get a little pickier. They, uh, they're yeah. a little smarter. And they're, I mean, the times that I did or had fished them, you know, there's times where they do get really tricky. But for the mm -hmm. most part, if you can get to them before they see you, they're going to bite. And so. Absolutely. I just. It, there, I guess the biggest reason why I do hate it, doing it, is just because when that's going on that lake, depending on how big it is, that's usually like the only thing going. And so you show up to a lake, water 60 degrees, 61 degrees, and you're like, great, you know, that's all they're going to be doing. So if you want to catch them, you got to catch them on beds. But I try to just, I try to chase a pre-spawn bite until those lakes are you know, starting to spawn. And then I try to go to the lakes that spawn first and try to get on a post spawn bite to just oh, avoid it, you know? So that's, that's what I usually do this time of year, but it's pretty tough because a lot of lakes are following the same, you know, they're in the same phase right now. So what are your, what are your, some of your favorite pre-spawn techniques or like how, where do you start? And as you follow through, what's your kind of your, your progression of pre-spawn up where you are? So, I mean, right away, right after ice out, I'm always, I'm usually just scanning around. I mean, right now, I, a lot of the lakes I end up going to right away are lakes I know good, pretty, pretty good already. So I can just kind of pull up and start catching them. But if I'm looking around on a new lake, I'll be scanning around deep pumps, wintering holes, stuff, places where I caught them right in the fall, um, right, right before ice up, throwing tubes, swim baits, um, Swim bait's one of my favorite ways. I love catching them on swim bait. That's probably my favorite technique of all time. One of them, anyway. It's one of my best fish catchers, anyway. And when you're saying, um, like, you're talking, like... Yeah, like three little, to four inch swim baits, yeah. Little boot tails, little K-Tex, little... What are your, some of your favorite, uh, what, what, like, are you, like, a mega bass, like a K-Tex? Yeah, a little bit of everything, yeah. Uh, spark shads, the... 2.8s, 3.3s, um, tactical minnow comes into play too because that's it's got a way different little tail kick versus a lot of those other ones too. So that, uh, yeah, there it is. So those ones, those ones are big time too. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. What? Looking at my uh, tackle wall right now, see if anything jumps out at me. Oh, something I've been messing around with just this year is that 2.8 Rhythm Wave by Jackal. That one's a, that one's got a cool little action, different than all three of those other ones. So I'm I'm kind of a, all my friends will say too, I'm just an absolute nerd for finesse swim baits. I, I don't know. I've got so many I could last me five years, but I'm constantly buying new ones because I just, I don't know, I just love it. So I'm yeah, so, new ones. So if you're that big a nerd, maybe we should dive a little deeper here. And talk about like so what like let's start maybe start with the jig head and then work backwards. But like what what are you looking for in a jig head? Or is there a single like is there like 
are you locked in like on a certain jig head or do you have a couple jig heads like what do you like for those those tiny paddle tails so let me see here so one of my favorites is that dirty jigs the guppy head the Matt I really Stephan. like that one yeah the Matt yeah. Stephan one. i really like that for a lot of them um all train makes a good one too um i just that one they they got quarter and three ace i think in that one i wish they made i mean hopefully they do here soon but i wish they made like an eighth and a three sixteenths because those are those are some of my favorite uh size weights though um outcast that that golden eye josh's golden eye that's a really really good head too um i'm gonna think of besides that those are those are my favorite jig heads and i'm always using as small as hook as i can because i feel like it gives the swim bait the best action a lot of guys will use like a four odd hook and a 3.3 or something uh, mm -hmm. and it, it just kills the action of the bait doesn't roll and Honestly, if they're coming to eat your swim bait, it's not like they really miss it that much. They they pretty much suck it all the way down, especially if it's under four inches. They just about always get it. So having a smaller hook is yeah, yeah. It's, that's the thing is like they're not gonna uh, short strike a two point eight. <laughs> right. Well, that's just it. If you're if you're throwing a a three point eight or a three point three, and they are doing that, well, it just tells you keep going smaller until you finally finally do start hooking up with them and at least in the, the around three inch swim baits give or take a quarter inch those are that's where i'm using i think in that guppy head i'm using like a a one out and then uh, anything bigger than that then i pump it up a little bit so this is not the tiniest but this is the three and a half inch right so mm -hmm. um i think the key thing here though right like is that in a swim bait this small you kind of got to avoid getting too far back Right. Whereas like right. you want that that tail kick and when the hook gets stiff way back to here, then you you lose kind of the roll of the body. Uh oh, what's it? Hayden's free up. So, right. Like you kind of want to like almost look at how much your swim bait flexes. And if you put too long a hook shank and you make it stiff too far back, then you're starting to lose your kind of roll and kick, I guess, a little bit. So it really affects your did your screen lock on you by any chance? Now we lost your sound. So, uh -oh, you got problems. See what you did, Bart? You caused Hayden to lock up. Hayden, can you hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me. Because <laughs> we, all right, I'm going to boot you again and then you can try to come back in and see if that works. A little bit of a little there so we'll get it figured out here um let's see yeah panel tails largo shad heard good things about that i haven't fished the largo shad myself there is but uh another vote for the largo shad hopefully your travels are good bart we'll see you tomorrow yeah it's always it's always bart's fault Interesting. We'll have to ask uh, him about the uh, the strolling SJ. So we'll hopefully get Hayden back here in a little bit. While we're waiting for Hayden, I don't want to forget that tonight is one of the nights we are going to do a live unboxing of an MTB box here, and uh, we're going to give it away tonight. So we're going to open this up a little later, maybe sooner if Hayden has trouble. But uh, and then we're going to give this away tonight. So uh, thanks to Mystery Tackle Box for supporting the stream. Uh, that allows us to bring this to you in uh, 1080. Uh, so if you guys are enjoying the, the new high def look, if you don't and you don't like to see Hell of Ass in high def and it's like too scary, then uh, sorry, MTB did that. Um, but so yeah, they're supporting the show, allows us to increase our uh, our budget a little bit. And uh, we thank them for that. And I guess they are running a promo now through, uh, let's see, it's through June 19th that they're doing 20% off all subscriptions and gift boxes. So that is a special they're running for Father's Day. Obviously, it's a great time for a gift. And I do have a link and a code down in the description below uh, if you guys want to uh, use that. It's a great time of year if it's like Father's Day's ticking and you're like, dude, my dad fishes. I don't want to get him. An MTV box, like a three-month, might not be a bad little gift. So worth checking out. 
All right. See the top of Hayden's, Hayden's head. He's not, it's not going. I don't know. Well, maybe that doesn't really work. In. There he is. Maybe not so great. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming back. All right, we're going we're gonna to just put him on hold here just for a second. Carol, I think, said she caught her PB on a Largo Shan. Did I see that, Carol? Yeah, very cool. Not quite yet, Gravy. Glad you appreciated the high res, Jim. All right, I think Hayden's back. Can you hear me now? I can hear you great. There you go. Yes, Man. good point, Shadow. If, if the high res Hellabass is too much, you can turn it down on your end. You know, if you'd like to see visors and beards in lower definition, that's definitely an option. Good to have you back, Shadow. It's been a while. I saw you uh, telling everybody that there are no bass in the St. Lawrence earlier today on another stream. So, <laughs> but cool, yeah. So we were talking uh, heads, and we just we just talked about small swim baits and head, and using a small enough hook size, which I think is a very important thing not to overhook it. Whether it's a two point eight or a four point two, you don't necessarily want to overhook it. Where you're, right. I think I was trying to explain, like you want to not get down into the, you know. Look at where your swim bait bends in the water and make sure your hook's not getting, you know, past right. that where you're going to lose that roll and flex and kick. Yeah, I always try to, like, get it before that, like, taper towards the tail starts or mm -hmm. at least try to get there not too far into that. Seems like that's kind of the happy, the happy spot on most swim baits. Right. Very cool. Um, Chris, I think you come to a great place to start check out these streams hang out i would say debo's channel debo's fishing is another great channel on youtube uh it does a lot of bank fishing a lot of uh intro stuff so i think you know get <clears throat> get uh hanging out with this community and uh, i think you'll enjoy it chris so glad you're getting into fishing that's awesome um i was gonna say so then let's 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 head up so are you uh straight fluoro braid the leader like what's your setup um and then kind of work back into your rod and reel and how you like to do that yeah so on we'll start kind of on the bait caster version of things so if i'm throwing one on a bait caster it usually is going to be like a three ace or maybe up to a half ounce but i can still fish a three ace pretty deep um, especially if we're talking pre-spawn if i'm fishing it deep i'm fishing it super slow anyways so mm -hmm. um three ace is usually plenty and then so uh on a 12 3 8, will you throw like as small as a 2.8 on a 3 8 ounce head? I actually threw a, I actually threw a 2.5. Um, it was like just a custom pour swim bait. Um, I don't wasn't like a big fan of the swim bait. It just was happened to be two and a half inches and it was really small and it kicked. So I put it on a, a 3 8 ounce head with a one odd hook and it fit really good and I was able to fish that really deep. And I think because it was so small, it also helped me keep it super deep if it was any bigger it probably would have had a little more drag in the water and been a little bit tougher to keep down but and yeah i'm, I'm usually if i'm fishing a three ace or i'm fishing it on a bait caster i'm always doing it on straight 12 pound floral um and then as far as spinning rods um pretty much braid to leader i like eight pound braid um and then to a seven pound leader usually seven or maybe ten if it's not as deep and I'm around like a lot of rocks or something like that, but usually it's always seven. Um, I like sniper FC sniper for all my fluorocarbon and I like a soft rod for both of them. I actually, so as far as I'm kind of jumping back and forth, but as far as the bait caster goes, I like the seven, two medium light X bride. It's a mm -hmm. bait casting rod. And actually, uh, Josh Douglas recommended that one to me. And I, picked that up and i immediately bought a second one because i can use it for so many other things but anyways slow slow ratio reel too that helps a lot for keeping it you don't you really don't want to be reeling it too fast especially in the spring so i was like a 6.3 to one keep it nice and slow um and then yeah back to the spinning rod i actually it's a voselka custom rod that i I usually use for that. Dane made me one. It's actually part of his hair jig blank, but I had him cut it down like seven inches to make it a seven three. And uh, that rod is awesome for swim baits. 
loads up super, super deep into the blank. And I, like I said before, I really like a rod that. <clears throat> Breaking up a little bit. Right when he was getting Loads to the juice. Up good. <clears throat> For anything to do with swim baits, I like something with pretty soft. Sure. Some guys like more backbone, but. Am I? Uh oh. Where'd you hear me last? There's Mike. You hear me? You are a little choppy and breaking up. I tried to like limit some of the other stuff that was going on to see if it was me bogging you down, but uh, we'll give it a little bit more. But we might have to send you inside to the the Wi-Fi if it doesn't get better. Yeah, I can. Yep. I, yeah, that's no problem. We can do that. But uh, we just won't be able to, you, to grab you got any me baits. Back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're okay right now. Okay, just let me know. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit of robot Hayden. But uh, what's up, Jig Squad? Um, yeah, that's a good point. I remember when 6.3 was considered a fast reel. <laughs> you you probably don't remember that, Hayden. <clears throat> um, so when you're fishing them deep, uh, I, I don't. I, don't know, you I got into it. No. Yeah. When you're fishing deep, are you more crawling? Or are you a pendulum it? Or are you like trying to keep it off the bottom? Or are you like literally like dragging it or like trying to get it to? Um, I mean, it all depends on the day, right? But usually just as long as it's within the last couple feet of bottom. I mean, it's tough to tough to always know that. Luckily, or fortunately, I've got live scope. So if I am not sure and I'm just trying to keep it just off bottom, I can usually tell where I'm at. But if you just let it hit bottom to start and then you just start slow reeling you're usually pretty good mm -hmm. as long as did it's you mention yeah. go ahead did, on your <laughs> on your spinning rod setup uh how long a leader and what is your leader knot of choice so i like a really long leader usually well i say really long i mean anywhere from 15 to 20 feet um which is long to some guys some guys it's not long but and what leader not and i think we're gonna have to go for the wi-fi option if you can hear me hayden <laughs> Yeah, so. I can hear you. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna boot you back yeah. out, and then maybe you can find a better connection, and then hop back on. I. Uh... All right, technology is awesome when it works, and uh, when it doesn't, it looks like that. Yeah, we can maybe touch on that when he gets back. Uh, there's just. There's been a dead. I mean, you don't hear much about five to one reels much anymore. It's a good thing we have Punch here to assess the technical uh, <clears throat> IT things. I saw a question earlier, Chris. Your chat looking for smallies um, <clears throat> below the dam, red rock from the bank, got a decent area, uh, foot or two visibility. I mean, these little, I mean, don't let, smallies can still track down a little swim bait, um, even in dirty water, but I would definitely start out with maybe some square bills, um, smaller chatter baits, like the mini max could be really good, uh, Chris, like kind of white and chartreuse type thing with a, with a little paddle tail like this would be really good, um, top waters, right, like a you know, river situations, little poppers, bone poppers, when the water warms up a little more, once you kind of are sure they're done with the spawn, which down where you are, popper should be starting to go pretty good. Um, I love, love, love a popper for topwater smallies in the river. That's a great way to catch them. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, square bills, swim jigs, 
things like that should be really good, Chris. Hopefully that helps you. And then I guess if you got if you got to slow down, if you can get a Ned or a tube down there without snagging up too bad, those are really good options as well. <laughs> humble, humble brag, Adam. <laughs> Yeah, whenever they start to get to the juice, that's when the internet. Um, what's up, Stephanie? Good to see you. I have not played around with the big mushroom, like the Magnum Neds that like, I think what you're talking about is kind of what uh, like Mikey Ball shows. I haven't played around with those. <clears throat> Stained water in upper 60s. Um, you know, I would look at, they might start barring a top water soon. Uh, I wouldn't sleep on top waters in the upper 60s. Stained water, I like bone colors, or I would go with maybe covering water with a a brighter jerk bait. Um, even a, maybe a louder one like the Rerange, like that chartreuse white they have, it could be really good to see if you can get to find them. And then once you locate them, then you can always slow down and throw like a darker green pumpkin, black blue tube, or a darker net, or something like that. But one thing about Smalley is if you're, if you're new to a lake or you're just not familiar with it, I, I'm a big fan of using search baits to get a bite or two or at least get a follow. A lot of times Smalley's are notorious for following baits. And if you can get them to follow or roll on a top water or show themselves on a jerk bait, then once you've kind of – Smalley's don't typically uh, hang out by themselves too much. So if you get one or two bites, you can usually slow down and then, you know – uh, get on to them. You didn't miss much, just a little bit of internet difficulty, Jay. So, what's up, Hayden? Hey, all right, all right. Hopefully, this is better. You, so far, so good. Good. <clears throat> Let's see, I got a few other star. Uh, so, do PB and J jigs really work? No, no, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it's not my favorite color where we live. Do you use them a lot up there? Um, I use them for largemouth quite a bit. I, I don't know. I've always kind of liked PB and J because for some reason, and you're probably going to scold me, but black and blue just has never been my favorite. So like when I go to like a little bit more off colored lake, I kind of mm -hmm. just threw a PB and J. I like the purple. For some reason, I've always been attracted to purple with baits versus blue. I think it's more likely that Johnson will score you more than me. Say it again. I think Johnson's more likely to scold you than me. You might want to yeah. turn your volume down just a little bit. There's a little bit of an echo. Yeah. As long as you can still hear me. Um. Yeah, Johnson's kind of my go-to uh, teacher when it comes to anything jigs. He's a good guy to ask. AJ says he thinks PB&J is a, a scam. He says it's a scam. But uh, so I, I think we touched on this earlier, Gravy. He doesn't make a living uh, guiding. It's supplemental. Uh, right. It's more of a excuse to fish more, honestly. I like teaching people. I think, I think the little bit that I do know, I, I like to try to share and help people uh, get on fish when they go fishing, you know, just basically just teach them more, you know. So that's kind of why. That's why I got into guiding anyway. So strolling little paddle tails. Do you ever do that? So the hover strolling, I've looked into it a little bit. And I've tried doing it a little. I haven't caught any fish doing it yet. Um, I know it's a big technique that came over from Japan. Um, yeah. So what's he asking technique with those smaller paddle tails? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it would. Um I know the way they do it in Japan is usually with like a super small like fluke and they have like this super goofy looking like 90 degree hook that goes into it. Well, they can do it with a jig head or just a plain hook and then like a nail weight. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a whole thing, but yeah, I've tried it a little bit, but hadn't, haven't had any success with it. What about, do you ever tow hair? <laughs> I don't, I don't tow it as much. I usually cast it a lot, but I, uh, I love fishing a hair jig. That's one of my favorites too. I got a lot of favorites. I don't have like one that I hate. So yeah. Yep. Black and blue. I mean, it works, works great, but 
Usually it's somebody else in the boat throwing it, not me. Awesome. <clears throat> There's people agreeing with you. They're not, not big fans That's of black and blue. Don't There's tell a, definitely you know, a little bit of feedback all of a sudden on your end, though. Do you have <laughs> headphones? <laughs> I can. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe. Um, is it like echoing bad? Yeah, I just keep hearing when I talk. There's a so either try turning you know your what? volume down no, to I a think lower point. Been. I think I was cupping my hand around my like the way I was holding my phone. Is that any better or no? Let me see. Um, that does sound a little better. All right. Okay. So, yeah. I I think I was cupping my hand around where the. All right. That's now I got my finger covering the phone. Awesome. Now, now I feel like we're good now. Good. Hopefully that's the end of our technical difficulties. Yeah. So let's, you brought up the hair. Well, I guess I did, but let's, I know like hair jigs were a big thing when we talked with Gussie a while back and it's always a popular mm -hmm. thing. And the elites are going to be going to St. Lawrence in a few, in what, three, four or five weeks. And I'm sure hair is going to play big there. So like, what yep. do you, like, are you, uh, is there a hair jig you like? Do you tie your own? And then what's your yeah, setup? I, I tie my own. I, just feel like the ones you can buy unless you're buying like buying them from another custom tire i just pick like the ones that are mass produced or garbage to be completely honest they're super inconsistent you know they're not tied right either in my opinion like they're just chunks of like the marabou feathers just cut and like tied onto a hook shank and it's they're not that good so if you either learn how to do it i i really like doing it it's something that keeps me busy all winter long so I tie them all the time. Um, but if you are going to try to get into it, either learn how to do it or find a guy who ties them and will sell them. Nice. Is there, do you pour your own heads or is there a head that you like to tie on that people can no, get? No, I actually, I use the same one Gussie does. So he uh, uses that one from Lake of the Woods Sports. I think it's the Bass Tactics. BJ. Is it the same smeltinator head? Does he tie on, or is that a different? No, one? it's 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 Bass Tactics. It's the same brand that um, makes that smeltinator jig, I believe. Uh -huh. um, but no, it's it's like an actual hair jig head that is designed for hair. I think Omni actually carries them, or is about to carry them pretty soon. They carry their hair jig, but not the empty. No, they not do. Maybe it's the is it the B jig? Yeah, the B jig. Well, let's take a look at that. Yeah. Got a little wire keeper built into it too for your little chunk of Senko that you want to thread on there. So this guy. So there's their hair jig. Mm -hmm. Is their hair jig decent for one that you can Honestly, buy? Honestly, I don't know. I didn't even know they sold one pre-tied. So it. Well, let's take a look at it. Let's. Uh, it, not not it, the it most looks, highest res picture, but what I mean from what you can from tell. What I can tell it actually it looks pretty decent. Yeah, those. I mean for a mass produced one or i'm not gonna say i guess they're mass produced but for an actual company selling them those probably a retail yeah those are probably pretty good but this is the one you like to tie on here yep yep i mean it's nothing like special but it's it's got a good gamakatsu hook in there and a little wire keeper and then a couple of different hook size options but i i always go small same like what we were talking about with the swim baits earlier so 16th, 3.30 seconds, what, what, I mean, where do you start? Usually 3.30 seconds is like what you need mm -hmm. most of the time, like 80% of the time that's going to get you by. Every once in a while you go to a lake that's real shallow, real rocky, and say you are bumping into the rocks and you're getting snagged every time, well, then probably go to a 16th, but 3.30 seconds is always... Uh, so 2.59, is that a... Two pack. That ain't. I mean, buck and a quarter, buck thirty. That ain't bad for. No, that ain't bad at all. Um, and then there's a code down here for you guys that can uh, save you a little bit on these uh, jigs, which is uh, always nice. Yep. So there you go. And then the uh, Omni has already imported them from Canada, so that's going to save you on shipping. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, the times because I I always bought them straight from them in Canada, and it's it just takes like forever to get here so like i'll be i'll get into the mood to start tying hair jigs in like december and all of a sudden it's like 
I don't get them till January. <laughs> so you know, it's nice that Omnia has them now. So, so there you go. If you are willing to learn to tie your own hair, you can get one tie jig for six dollars, or you can get basically five untied jigs for the same, mm-hmm. or four, four or five, right? <laughs> and tie yeah. yourself. Yeah. No, I. I mean, it's. I would encourage people to just learn how to tie it because I. I think it's just. I don't know something that gets me by all winter long. Something to do. I, I get really creative with it. So I mean, there's besides just tying up one color and stuff like that. I'm adding all kinds of different things. What, to them. Do you do you add a little strand? Colors. Like what's what's your little strand? Like, like a lot of people like a little strand of purple or little what, what's? Yeah, purple's purple's always good. Um, so do you like mainly tie black or do you like do a lot of different mainly colors? black? I mean, that's what everybody will tell you too. It's right. Like that's all you, all you need. If you're going to have one color is black. I wish I right. could, you know, tell you, Oh, there's this special color, but black is always going to be your best color, but olive is good. Um, just yeah, different natural colors, browns, grays, whatever you have confidence in, honestly, it's all going to work. Like I, I really have a hard time believing that you put, uh, olive colored one, like if you put an olive colored one in front of a fish or a black one, like they're, I just don't think they're gonna like pick one or the other or not eat one or the other. It, just whatever you have confidence in, really, and that goes for anything. I think the black one they can maybe pick out at a greater distance. Yeah, right? it's still no, wet's a little better. Right, there's definitely something to that. So where do you? It's marabou hair. Where where are you getting your marabou from? I, I just get it from a local fly shop in Superior. It's is there a, a I like is, trying to. Is there such thing as a premium marabou or a special marabou or? I mean, there probably is, but I. That's why I like buying it in person. I don't order it because it's like you can actually kind of go sift through the packages. You can tell what's going to be the good fluffy hair versus the stuff that's, you know, really soaked in paint and clumped together and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's basically marabou and a couple strands of tinsel here and there, but you don't ever mix anything else in. No, that's that's. If I'm doing that, it's just because I'm getting bored of tying them just straight, straight marabou. I don't, I can't say it really makes a huge difference, but sometimes it gives me a little boost of confidence having something extra in there. <laughs> Get a girlfriend <clears throat> with black hair. I got a dog. I got a Bernadoodle dog. So me and my fiance do. And there's a lot of black curly hair on that. And I've wondered about tying up some jigs with, with some of that hair. Nice. Haven't done it yet, but I got to do it when she's not around so she doesn't see me cut the hair off. <laughs> Very nice. Do you ever mess around with any other hair or tying hair for like cold water fall jigs? And not, not like not like the, the hair fly jig, but do you mess around with more like bucktail or hair on your football jigs or that kind of stuff? When yeah, sometimes. That's, it's a, yeah, that's a good option. Um, I do a little bit of both, little bit of that, little football heads and stuff like that. But I mean, you don't, I, I can't say I've caught a ton of fish doing it because there's generally, if they're biting that, they're going to probably just bite a tube too, you know, but they, they definitely eat that too. Somebody's asking me if I'll bring a rod tomorrow that they can play with. Um, <laughs> So yeah, what's your rod setup for the fluff? I assume you're throwing a, a Voseca custom hair jig yeah, rod, right? Yeah. So, all right, Dane. So get ready for some orders because it is the best rod you can get for hair. I mean, it is an eight foot rod. It's got just the right amount of backbone. Lots of tip. You can cast it a mile. You just have to check it out because you you talk to any of the other smally hammers in the state of minnesota they're all using that rod so i mean it kind of speaks for itself you go on bass heads and yeah anybody oh i'm looking to get into hair jig you know fishing everybody is commenting oh you got to get dane's rod got to get dane's rod got to get dane's rod you know everybody says it and it's not just me um but yeah it's an eight foot rod super long helps with casting distance and then uh i've actually just used a, a 2500 reel on it because you don't with that rod you don't need like a big spool to get like that extra casting distance 
Um, but I'm actually, I just bought a Vanford today that I'm going to be a 4,000 that I'm going to be putting on there. <clears throat> a little bit bigger spool, help it out just a little touch more, but not like it needs it. Somebody literally just rang my doorbell and my dogs are losing their mind again. So, <laughs> but I think the main way to get up, if, so plenty of people have talked about this rod and I think the only way to really get it is to go to Bazelka fishing customs on Facebook and send them a message, yep. right? Like, I think that's, yeah, just, I would just shoot them a message on right on Facebook. Yeah. So yeah, he uh, makes a great hair. I mean, he makes tons of other really good rods, but, his, for as far as hair jig, I think that's what's kind of been his biggest seller by a long shot. Sure. Yeah, it's eight foot long, but it's nothing like a surf rod. It's a very yeah, parabolic. Yeah, I, mean, I don't even know what a surf rod is like, but if it's yeah. anything like what I'm thinking about, yeah, no, it's not no. at all. We did not get a boat yet. But it might happen at the end of this week. So the wait may be over. Yeah. So we, we kind of touched on the the, the the chunk of Senko. But like, what do you, so what is that for? And, and uh, how much are you actually putting on? Like, do you, does it ever stick out of the hair? Is it just tucked in? Like, no, how much? never. I never have it stick out past the hair. Maybe. Sorry. I'm trying to get a There's a bear here. behind you, you know. Did you know there was yeah, a bear? Yeah. That's a. Uh... I'm in my parents' basement right now, and he's my dad's got a bunch of mounts down here. Um, as far as yeah, the chunk of Senko on there, I'm never letting it stick out past the hair. It I pretty much fill up the shank of the hook before it bends. So okay, I I mean it probably comes to be about three eighths or a half of an inch, I suppose. Maybe maybe a little We're bit like more. talking a quarter of a ned at most. <laughs> right? Yeah, you don't want much. It just helps. I mean, the biggest thing is that that little bit helps so much with casting distance. Just having a little bit of plastic so it's not just jig and hook and a little bit of hair. And then it does kind of help bulk it up a little bit in the water. Uh -huh. So it gives a little more, a little bit more of a profile. Otherwise, it's kind of looks just like a drowned rat in the water, which I never fish it like that. But I suppose there's probably certain scenarios where maybe that would work better. But I always put a chunk of Senko on there. Yeah, you get maybe a touch of salt or... <clears throat> right, yeah, like the Yamamoto one, something that's got a lot of salt or something, just really dense, something that's going to help the cast right. a lot farther. You get maybe a little, gives them a little, when they bite it, right, maybe they get just a little more texture before they just get hook and head, right? I don't know. Right, yeah, because there's times where, I mean, honestly, most of the time when they do bite it, it's not like you feel a slam like you do when you're fishing a swim bait or any other bait. Like, it kind of just... I mean, most of the time they just have it and you're just yeah. like, uh, like you'll set the hook. Like if you're fishing it real slow on rocks, you're going to set the hook on rocks all the time because you're like, I don't know if that's a fish or not. Cause that's what the bite feels like. It'll just be like, all of a sudden you have a chunk of weed on there. Like you just reeled it through a chunk of cabbage and that's what's on your bait. And then that's, that's all the bite feels like. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about how you fish it. Like what, what, uh, is there a depth range you like the most? And are you just casting it out and are you letting it hit the bottom? Or are you counting it down a certain distance or what's... Yeah, uh, pretty much 10 foot and under for me. I mean, there's certain scenarios where I'll fish it a little bit deeper. And that's when I would bump up to like an eighth. Mm -hmm. um, but for 330 seconds and just most overall hair jig fishing, I'm in under 10. And I'm kind of just casting it out, letting it get where I think is about halfway through the water column in whatever mm -hmm. depth I'm in. Trying to kind of keep it above them, keep it up a little bit. So, because they're always kind of, especially on a sunny day, they're always going to be kind of looking up. So, I try to keep it above them, or at least above where I think they're at. So, they kind of see it and they'll start to track it a little bit. And all of a sudden, you think you got weeds on, but it's a fish. Yeah. So, you, you're not typically trying to make bottom contact rarely ever. Not usually. I mean, if you're in like less than two or three, I mean, you're probably going to bump into some bottom here and there. It's kind of hard to, Especially when you're trying to reel it slow, it's hard to actually not let it hit bottom in that. But, but typically, letting a hair bot or a hair jig touch the bottom is a good way to lose a hair jig. That or just get scum on it, or yeah. I, I just don't think they like it, like bouncing through the rocks like they might like a swim bait. They just kind of like you want it to be super subtle. And you'll watch like 
some guys youtube videos were like oh how to fish a hair jig and i mean it works sometimes too but they, they'll like go oh and you want to shake your rod here and there and like you don't want to do that you just want to reel it straight like it's to a lot of people it's probably super so it's like a 2.8 and then just even more finessey than a 2.8 like just right. slow and steady and yeah slow and steady and not doing a whole lot to it um and then the hook set's just kind of like just reel and pull, mm-hmm. right? Like you're not really like setting the hook. Um, are you using yeah, the same seven seven pound floral yeah, leader, five, long actually, leader, same setup? Or? I actually use five pound braid just for a little extra added casting distance and then go to a, a seven pound leader. Five pound braid. That's, that's, uh, that's small. That's a little scary to some guys, but. I might be I mean, too old to even the... tie five pound anymore. My eyes might be going. <laughs> Well, when you're tying with an FG, you just got to hold the line in your mouth and you're using only the fluorocarbon to tie it. Yeah. Well, actually, so I think you were breaking up earlier. We were trying to, like, so it, you are an FG. You're F, Team FG. Yes. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We were breaking up when I was trying to say that. That's that's uh, the only leader knot that I will tie. Especially because, like I was saying right before that, I like to be able to have a long leader. So I'm usually reeling that knot right into my spool. Mm-hmm. So you don't even know it's there at least most of the time you can't even tell the knots in there so you reel it right in and it's you cast it out it's no problem that's always the age-old question like what do you think (laughs) is the hair jig a bug is it a minnow is it a leech is it just they're just curious like what right any I, i honestly i don't know i mean smallies are so curious and the more you understand how curious they are um, I feel like it really helps you experiment with other baits that catch them good. So, yeah, I kind of think it's a lot of a curiosity thing, and they just kind of get, I don't know, they just like to follow stuff. And so when they see something that looks like that and they're just following it, it's almost like they just, it's too easy of a meal to pass it up and they just yeah. eat and it. I think like, it's I like a think... bed. It's so unthreatening that they're not scared. Right. Just, and like, <clears throat> I don't know, like you may have heard this before, but. Fish don't have fingers. They don't have hands. They can't touch it with their fins. So the only way they can check something out is putting it in their mouth, right? Yep. And I think similar to a Ned rig, right? Like, I think that's why Ned rigs get so many bites, right? Is because it's mm-hmm. so unassuming. It doesn't look like it can hurt them. Whereas, right. like, a big craw or a bigger swim bait, they may follow it. But they're like, mm, that might hurt or that might not be right. But sometimes right. things that are just so simple shaped and so minimalist right that i think the mm-hmm. smiles will just put it in their mouth just to see yeah because everybody says oh it looks like a leech but and yeah, i mean it does look like a leech but like how often do you actually see a leech just like swimming around like i don't know that i ever have maybe somebody else has but i think it's I, more likely like maybe it's a bug hatch or yeah something. like a, I mean, a little fly. dark minnow just kind of like cruising like whatever i don't right. know right or like like we touched on a little bit ago like with the black like it's basically just creating a silhouette to them so it might like it might not even matter what color it is if, if they're looking from below they're just see some object kind of slowly lurking through the water <clears throat> that yeah. it's come up behind it and eat it i think when you were breaking up a little bit i think you were saying like 15 to 20 foot leaders are pretty common for you yeah yep 15 to 20 i i just do like usually what i do is i do I just kind of stretch out the spool and, and make my wingspan like do it twice. Yep, two. just do it twice. <laughs> but I like really stretch out, and I can't remember what my wingspan is, but I want to say it's around like seven and a, se- I don't know, seven feet. That might be way off. I don't even remember. So but I do that. 10, ten plus, more. 10 to 20, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, so good question. So I think a seven foot rod, you can get, I mean, if you're just kind of want to get in and dabble, and kind of yeah. learn i, I think I, a, you can get by with a seven i wouldn't go right. much shorter than that but if you get into it and you really start to enjoy it and it's something that you mm-hmm. fish consistently then you're probably going to want to start looking at a seven four seven six maybe right. even an eight Honestly, foot rod yeah anything north of like seven six and as long as it's a soft rod with a good tip is gonna do fine um yeah i i think I'm assuming he's asking because he probably already has a seven foot rod that he maybe he could try to use, which if it's soft, I think it'll work. You're just not going to get as good a casting distance. Another thing I like about using an eight foot rod is 
you just you pick up so much line on just a soft hook set so you mm-hmm. just kind of sweep and then you got them it's a super parabolic rod bend and you when you hook up on them especially with that rod of danes you don't lose them <laughs> like i could probably count on one hand how many fish i've actually lost when fighting them on that yeah. rod because it just absorbs every single head shake I don't remember, is the medium light the 702 or the 701, Keith? I actually have a 701 Sierra because that was my way of, like, cheaping out. Like, because uh, the one thing is, like, it's not easy to find a budget-friendly hair rod because mm-hmm. <laughs> they're so niche. The right. companies don't bother making a, a $100 to $120, right? Uh, it's just, it's it's so yeah. niche, right? So it's, if, it's uh... tough. I don't know if Adam is still on or not, but he he's a Dobbins guy too, and he uses uh I don't I, I don't know Dobbins rods that well, but I know yeah. he's got a rod that that works pretty good, and it's a longer one. So if he's still I'm guessing on, he's, he's probably using a 741 or a 761 that they don't make anymore, but I could right. be wrong. Um, but that 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 that's uh, an extreme, and that's a 370 dollar rod or something like that. So yeah, uh, hey, yeah, I, I don't know, but there is a 701 Sierra that. Uh, it does okay in a pinch. The 702, that... you could do it. It's just you may not be able to cast it as well as you want. It's it's going to be fine for as far as, like, if a fish eats it. It's got a soft enough action yeah. that you're going to catch fish on it. I think what you'll mm-hmm. struggle with is getting the distance that you may want. But what right. you can do, which other people do, is they, they tow hair, right? They'll, like, cast mm-hmm. it out, and they'll kind of stroll it. Like, they'll kind of drag it, really like, on the trolling motor on, like, two or something like that and that is a way and you can let line out and and do that so i would dabble with it because if you're like me (laughs) i i I only break out the hair jig a couple times a year um now hayden probably throws a hair jig a hundred outings a year right and i probably throw it like less than five so for me the justification is not to go out there and spend i'm pretty sure the dane uh, custom rod is not a 120 dollar rod so um so I would try it, Keith, and play around with it. If you get bites and it finds like something you like, then you can think about investing later, and then you can keep using that 702 as a Ned rig rod. So, um, sure, yeah. I know, like uh, Shimano, they have a Zodius that's a pretty good hair jig rod. It's a okay. the new the new in the new blank anyway. There's like a it's a seven six light. That's a super super small one. Oh, is that Bailey? How's yeah. it going, man? Um. But yeah, that they, they make a pretty good, pretty good hair jig rod. I'm trying to think of any other. Evidently, St. Croix makes one in the Victory. I think the Victory is like yeah, yep, $150 yep. or like less than $200. Right, probably yeah, similar price point to the Sierra, I think. Yeah, I want to say they're right around $200. But yeah, my buddy Cody was telling me about Cody Hunter. They, they, he helped, I think, design that one. And him and a handful of other guys. But yeah, it's like a 7 foot 10. And that's a, that's a good one. I don't think we uh, talk, but I'm guessing the best way to... Uh... No, I know him. He's, he's Yeah, I know. He around. brought it up, though. Yeah, you, <laughs> nobody's going to let Cal in their boat. But um, if you did, right, the uh, the way to do it would be to go to uh, Hayden Anderson Fishing on either, I would imagine, Instagram or Facebook. Yeah, my number's right on there. And so, yeah. um, so text me, call me, email. Facebook message here, something like that. That right. would be the best way. Right. I would prefer text. I just, that's where I'm going to see it the soonest. Sure. And so as soon as I can respond. If you're like up north in Wisconsin, you're like, it looks nice on Thursday. And like, <laughs> can I get a trip? Text him. <laughs> if you're planning right. a month well, out, then you can. It's probably always going to be weekends too. Sure. Cause I still but, you work a full time job. But yeah, exactly. If it's know? last minute, like. Right, right. I mean, it stays late. We can do evening trips in the summer. It stays uh, in Superior. It probably something. stays late till what about this is one a.m. Probably a good time to touch on that. Yeah, that's that's something I want to start doing here pretty soon. Um, it's just hard with work sometimes because I don't always know right when I'm going to be done. Yeah. Um, it's usually around like four o'clock, but there's times where all of a sudden I'm there till eight o'clock. So I it's hard to schedule them long in advance and like promise. Oh yeah, I'm going to be able to do it right after work, but. Right. I was thinking about kind of trying to get into that a little bit and just kind of leaving it like, hey, you know, it'll probably work, but I might not be able to. And then we just might have to reschedule. So if there's people that are interested in that, too, and they happen to be in my area. I know a lot of your listeners probably aren't from northern Wisconsin, but yeah, we're all over. Are, I bet you some of them like the vacation up there. So, yeah, if they happen to be in the area and it works out, I do want to do start doing some evening trips. 
Yeah, that's a good question, Stephanie. A lot of this talk about braid to floral leaders and why. And me personally, I only use them for spinning rods. I don't know about you, Hayden. Do you dabble with braid to floral on bait casting and all? Or yep. Ever since I started tying the FG, I yeah. uh, I do. I had bad luck using it with like the Alberto or other, you know, uni to uni knots. I I always would break it. But since I started using the FG, I, I use it on casting stuff sometimes. So I would say. Let's start with spinning because I think that there's not a lot of like discussion on, <laughs> I mean, there's some people that still like straight mono or straight floral, but like most serious anglers are really moved to braid to floral. And to me, there are several advantages. One is uh, a big thing is like for me, braid knots almost don't exist or not, sorry, not braid knots. Wind knots don't really exist with braid. You don't, that line twist problem where you fish with floor or mono for a couple trips and you throw something and it like twists up and you, it like comes off your spool and coils like braid pretty much eliminates that in my opinion a good braid um yep. castability you can usually cast a lot farther with braid um hook setting you typically get a much better hook set with that braid on the softer spinning rods um i was gonna say something else uh feel sensitivity right that braid yeah. to floral leader is a lot more sensitive so like on bottom contact or even like throwing small swim baits or hair like that little tick like uh, on a tight line braid is super sensitive on slack line braid has almost right. no sensitivity but on a tight line uh which a lot of the finesse right like shaky heads you know it's it's typically a tight line technique so you're going to get more sensitivity cost right you can i literally have braid that i've had on my spinning reels for two to three seasons if i don't like mm -hmm. retie a lot so Damn. then you're just replacing a mono even even if you use mono like you can retie mono leaders or fluorocarbon whatever you like and you you, you know one spool of braid will last you multiple seasons and you're just retying you know six and you can flop ten. it too that's a yeah. that's a trick yep. I mean, if your braid fades that, you don't yeah. like it you can you can switch reels and flop it around absolutely mm -hmm. all that new stuff is right at the beginning yeah yeah um, i don't know that kind of trying to remember if there's any other i did a whole video on that like the reasons why is there anything else that yeah i mean just i don't know if you i, I kind of didn't hear you at the beginning but like castability just yep. distance wise yeah get so much farther without mono kinks and stuff banging through your guides as it goes out and then the other thing is flexibility right so if i if i put 10 pound fluorocarbon in my area yeah I'm yep. locked into 10 pound fluorocarbon leader unless I want to yep. strip $20 of line off or $5 if it's mono or whatever. Right? right. Whereas like if I get in a situation, if I've got like good 10, 12 pound braid, which is good for just about everything. Right. Yep. Um, I can go down to six with my leader or if I'm in thick, if I decide, Hey, I'm, I only got a couple rods. I want to go fish shallow around docks or reeds. I can go up to 12 pound just by switching right. the leader. Right. So like it yeah. gives you more versatility and saves you mm -hmm. money at the same time. Yep. Hopefully that answers your question, Stephanie. Um, yeah, way, yeah. way, way more reasons to use it entirely or than not. Yeah. Yeah, the, the only downside is learning the, the leader knots. And, yeah, and that's right. You know, you sit down on YouTube, you find one, and it's, to me, there are several good knots, especially with spinning right. rods where you're not like slacklining them. There's a lot yep. of good knots. And it's not really about what the best braid knot is. It's the one that you can execute on at a high level consistently. Yep. So uh, yeah, a lot of people talk about the FG. It's a wonderful knot, but it's also an intimidating knot. Right. So I mean, like, if if the Alberto's more not comfortable, gonna, like, the Sturgeon's not. They they all work well if you tie them correctly. So whatever right. you can tie correctly that's, is more yeah, important. You, yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. That's that's the biggest thing is making sure you're tying it right. You don't want to, you know. A mediocre FG knot is not even close to as good as, I mean, this is obvious, but as good as like a Alberto or whatever. I mean, that's, I don't know what you use most of the time, but that's what I would say is the second best in my experience. The modified Albright, Alberto, call them, people call them the same. People um, shouldn't do what I do. I, I tie a Yucatan, a Yucatan knot and it's, it's just simple and easy and I get by with it on spinning rods, but like it's a disaster with braid on bait casting like i will snap it but like I'd probably, we'd probably butt heads in the boat <laughs> when it comes to opinions on <laughs> that type of stuff i don't i don't I, it works for me but i don't recommend it to others how's that yeah <laughs> yeah see I, 
Yeah, that Alberto though was easy. I mean, that's uh, you can tie that one in thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. I would say that, that if I would say the Alberto or Crazy Alberto or that those are good ones to start out with. There's some good like mm-hmm. Justin Lucas has a good video on that. A few other people yeah, do. Yep. Um, yeah, were you throwing mono or fluorocarbon three to four foot leader? Because if it was mono, it shouldn't have been a problem. Two hundred. I mean. But that's why I also like I typically don't go more than about ten to fifteen inches on my top water leaders. So you want you want my tip on line with top water? Sure. Straight fifteen pound mono. That's what I do. The whole way? The whole way. We're taking them off the stream. That that is the deal. I will fight you. Disagree. <laughs> See, I and I'm when I'm doing that for large for small mouth, I don't do that for large mouth. There, I just don't lose fish anymore. I used to pull them off, and I know you could adjust your rod more. So maybe I was using the wrong rod with the braid, mm-hmm. but the rod I like using for it works really well with straight mono. And you just, I think you land so many more fish, and you're not pulling out hooks. They're jumping, and along with the right rod, your line is absorbing the head shakes and my land percentage has gone up so much since using that. So we can debate on it, but I think I, that's the way I go. Yeah. For small. And, and it is. And as, and as I'll go right back to what we said before, or kind of what I've said. It's, it's all about the setup and the mechanics. So yep. my, the rod I have, like I, I don't lose fish. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you're going to lose a couple fish on top waters every now and well, then. Well, right. That's just like, it. So, I mean, yeah. it's like, but like, it's, I don't feel inevitable. like I, and I, I don't, I don't straight hooks. I don't like, I've got it set up. Right. So like I, I throw a 30, 40 pound braid to, a, you know, a short leader and like the rod I have, you know, a softer three power fury or Sierra 703, 733. When I eat the hook, I just pull into them yep. <laughs> and start reeling. And like they're, they're buttoned up. It's like, I don't know. They, they tend to have all kinds of hooks in their faces and like, yeah. and I just know not to rush them right when I get to the boat. Right. It's usually game over. So, um, <clears throat> but that's the thing. Yeah. It, that works for me. It works for right. my rod, my mechanics, my setup. That's, um, and and yeah, the big you thing. to go back to what works for yeah, you. The big thing I don't like about mono is on a long cast, right? If, if, yeah. a, if, a, if you bomb a cast out there on a spook, right? Or a Vixen or whatever your choice yep. is. You got to hit them pretty hard to sink the hooks in on a long See, I just, and that's, that is the, the downside, but as long as you get a feel for it. So right. long cast, small eyes, they, they're, I mean, they do, they eat it a lot right when it hits the water, you know, within the first couple twitches, a lot of times. Yep. So I just use a high speed reel and just, I mean, just start reeling basically. And then once you feel them, you just kind of lean into them. You just don't have that immediate um, feedback right. like you do with braid, yeah. where you're you're actually able to kind of. So, so my biggest downside them. for me, right, yep. is that on a long cast, if they if I think they have it, and I like, I end up moving the bait so much long further, like on a mm-hmm. hook, like I will set the hook and like I'll mm-hmm. pull it away. Whereas like on braid, I just kind of like reel. If they don't have it, it like moves a foot and it comes up, and they're like right where i feel like yep. i really need to like pick up more line and move that bait a lot harder on a mono mm. or a copoly that i feel like i end up like pulling it away from them and that's why yeah I don't, no I, don't. I i see where you're coming from there for sure so like as far as like fish that miss the bait and i kind of like want to like like i feel like you know i don't know so that that's just me and then i like high right. speed reels for top waters but um yeah yeah i, I use like an eight to one Um, let's see if we miss anything else. What we got off our little <laughs> do you use yellow braid? Do you like high vis braid or do you like dark braids? Yeah, I'm on most of my spinning combos. I'm using either red or yellow, just regular Power Pro. I had a yeah, the... really bad experience this spring with some other braid. I don't need to name it, I guess. I don't want to talk bad about other company but you find what works and you, you go with it that's yeah i had a really really bad experience with and it was like brand new stuff and 
a couple of guys were like, well, oh, you probably just got a bad spool, but it was two different colors. <laughs> like it was, it wasn't even the same spool. I was having problems with both of them. So true. Just went back to the tried and true Power Pro. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I use I, honestly my some of that braid's been on my rod so long. I don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's probably yeah, probably faded. So you don't even know exactly what color it is. It's just like this was a high vis color. Yeah, now I mean, white. if it's a long enough leader, does it matter? <laughs> right. Yeah. Really. Don't. I mean, that's that's the pro of using the high vis is that you can see it, and then you have your leader, so the fish don't see it. Um. The only time I like a dark green braid or a moss green braid is like for my dock rod because there are times that I will skip the leader, right? True. Whereas like it's too gnarly because I'll go up to like 15, 16, 17 pound leader if True. it's if the fish are big enough and it's the, the, the cover is nasty enough. But sometimes I'll be like, no, we're just going straight, straight 30 pound braid. We're not, we're not messing with it. Yeah. Um, and then that's nice to not have a neon green tied to your, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least it looks somewhat natural. Uh, um, yeah, I think smallies do like, I think there are times in the year in certain bodies of water where they really key in on small bait, but in yeah. general, I am not shy about throwing full size top waters for smallies. I mean, I know way too many guys who have caught giants on like musky baits. So like they're, the thing is with smallies, if they're in the right mood, like they're gonna try at least. They're they're always gonna come yeah. up and you know, smash it or try to, you know. I I tend to use like the mid size, you know, I like three hooks because I just on all my walking baits, I always like three hooks because it's just better hookups, you know. Yeah. For um sure. but but yeah, I, I tend to stay towards like the <clears throat> I'm trying to think of what, what's exactly your walking bait of choice? What like feeling I, so, let me wait, wait. Let me guess. You're a shower yeah. blow guy. Yes. <laughs> um. Yes, I love a shower blow, and half the reason is because the hooks are like literally the best hooks you can buy. That come with them, like they're so good. So, it's kind of like an added incentive to buying the bait because like you don't have to swap the hooks until they get dull. Yeah. Uh. And I, and I think that there are certain times, like I've been on the river, like late June, and you're seeing like all these tiny little pin minnows and shads. Mm -hmm. And like, there are times that like, okay, you, you need to like lay up and like, you have to go with the, not even this popper, but go to the small popper or you got to right, like, like throw a little like 2.8 high tech like the, or like, yeah, one of the tiny, little there are times, pieces. but you should note it. Like if there, if you're seeing a ton of fish come up and look at it or follow it, or they're, you see them breaking, but they won't touch your top water and you're seeing a Typically, if they're that keyed in on small bait, you're going to see that small bait. And that's right. an instance where I will not you know, go away from the, the big topwaters, uh, AJ. But when in doubt, I like to go big because smallies are, are feisty critters. Kind of triggers um, them, yeah. Having a bigger one, I think, sometimes. Calls them from a long ways, too. Yeah. Uh... All right, I keep moving around. I don't have a fancy setup like you, so I just am using my phone and phone. I'm trying to get comfortable with it. My just keep moving around. Do you know they make phone holders, like things, tripods and, and things like that? And like, yeah, but you like, like that thing? You probably got one on your dash in your car that like holds your phone. Like, I don't. I like look at them all the time, but I just would, I never buy one. I don't know. Uh, Topwater shell baits, do you use braid deleter as well for them? Uh, I guess we kind of talked about this. I do. Right. Aiden does not. Right. Um, just, I just had bad experience. But it could have come down to just the rod I was using. And I went to, I, I don't use that rod for top water anymore. I actually, we were, I was talking about that 7.2 medium light x bride earlier that I use for swim baits. I use that same rod. That's why I bought multiples because I can use it for tons of stuff. I use that for top water too. Cane walker. It's all right. It's a decent bait. Yeah, it um, looks kind of like a shower blow, but it's, uh, Definitely not the same. I did have a, a good experience where George, my co-angler, was throwing his cane walker down the river, and the vixen. Absolutely Wait, am I thinking? Oh, yeah, that was the vixen. Okay. <laughs> but it it, uh, it catches them too. Obviously, it worked on fork. Um, right. Uh, John wants to know how who got you into fishing. 
so my dad's always been a big time like outdoors guy so like obviously you see there's i got all kinds of animals around me right now here um so he, he got me into fishing just the outdoors in general but i really really got into fishing just the older i got i guess um always i don't know what it was i feel like there's just more like gadgets involved with the fishing as far as like lures and different you know reels and i don't know that always kind of intrigued me so i got a lot a lot further along into fishing sure um yeah so he he introduced it to you and then you just took it to an excessive level right yep so yeah he's kind of the he's the guy who loves hunting and i'm the guy who goes uh goes fishing more so compliment he, each other nice he he fishes between hunting seasons and <laughs> right i kind of just fish through hunting season yeah i've got the same way i used to like i when i was younger i used to deer hunt more do that kind of stuff but once i got like out of college and got a job like when i had to like make a decision with what i was going to do with my vacation time hunting went completely out the door yeah i i just yeah i i still would love to be able to hunt more but some of the best fishing of the year is like oh, man. wisconsin and rifle the boat ramps are empty man yeah can't beat it uh, I would say most of my walking baits are going to have a rear feather almost all the time. Yeah, usually most of them come with them. And then if, if I end up having to replace them, I try to always put back a feather. Uh, we should probably maybe talk some jerk baits. Sure. That's kind of, we can, it would be unfair to talk about smallies and not talk about jerk baits. And then we do have to remember right. to save some time to like, See what's in this bad boy and, and oh, give this yeah. away tonight. So we can't we can't get too carried away. We probably after we talk jerk baits, we're probably gonna have to open that up. So so uh tell what's your uh yay or nay jerk baits? Love them, hate them, they're the best yeah. ever. It's yeah, so I got a lot of favorite techniques. That's one of them. I I love catching fish on a jerk bait. Um Great, are you like right are you away. A bunch of them, like swim baits. Or are you locked in on certain ones? I'm, like you can probably guess which one I uh, use the most of. Vision one ten plus one. That's one of them. It's just the actual, just the Vision one ten. I mean, anything Mega Bass, honestly, anything in that one ten lineup. Um, the only one I guess I really haven't gotten real into is the plus two. But yeah, a lot of the just original plus ones and and regular diving ones um yeah i saw that pop up with the x-wrap that's a really good one too i i don't use it as much since i've gotten into the mega bass ones but the x wraps they catch the fire out of them too yeah I've, I've done pretty well on i mean i am not a huge jerk bait guy um we'll throw them when i have to i have a fair amount of 110s um they definitely work i would say the one that i have become most fond of lately is the rearrange yeah yep that i have actually i don't know if i've ever made a cast with one but uh my buddy damien really really likes those i think it's kind of funny because i think those are all he throws and i only throw the mega bass so that. we're fishing jerk baits together we're really covering a lot of yeah yeah exactly if you're not uh familiar with them they sound like your rod tip snaps every time you cast them or your line snaps, or he hit the cowling of the boat, or you know, it, it it sounds awful until you get used to it. So, do you leave your hooks on the mega bass, or do you switch them out? I do. I leave them. They, especially in the cold water, nothing. I, it's really hard to find a treble that keeps them suspending as good as just the regular mega bass ones. And you always like, I want a couple of mega bass pages, and like on Facebook and people are always complaining about the hooks bending out. Well, yeah, I mean, they're a really light wire hook, but they're super sharp. So as long as you're using the right setup, using a soft rod, I use 10 pound floral on a bait caster. Just, I mean, it's just like anything else. The trouble is you just lean into them and then play them out from there. So you really shouldn't be bending the trebles unless like they have it really good. And you're trying to like pull it out with the pliers. That's the only time I think I ever bend them. I would say the same thing. I would say if, if you're straightening hooks on a jerk bait and you're using 10 or 12 pound floral or mono, then I think yeah. you're probably got too stiff of a rod. Too stiff of a rod or you're just reefing on them. 
but like in the summertime, because I'll fish one throughout the summer too, and just fish it a lot faster. And then I like going to a, a beefier hook because they're obviously right. a lot more charged up in July and August than they are in April and May. So they get a lot more aggressive. They're jumping a lot more. They're digging harder. So a little bit beefed up hook definitely helps. Cause they're even, they're even hitting it a lot harder too. And then, you know? and then your, and then your mega bass becomes a slight slow sink instead of a true suspending. Which right. Is... But I'm usually not even letting it pause long enough right. to sink. But it helps off. keep you down, right? Like a slow sink, yeah. even working it fast, keeps it a little deeper, which is, yep. um, so when you're, uh, if you do have to replace them, do you, do you source mega bass replacements or what's your choice? I, of... I've never actually, like I plan to, I never, I, so I've got a big jerk bait box and I just have, a ton of them right now that just don't have hooks because I'll just start robbing them from other baits and putting them on the ones I use the most um, when the ones get dull and my favorite baits. So I do need to order some of the actual Mega Bass replacement hooks because the the Gamakatsu, the G Finesse trebles work pretty good. They're a really sharp hook. I really like the hook, but there's something about them. Like if you do, if you even if you still swap them on the bait, at least in cold water, it doesn't seem like they suspend as good as the regular mega bass hooks. So with the for smallies, since that's the theme of the night, what's uh what are your go to colors for So we could really go down a rabbit hole here, but I just like I gotta plug my phone in here. I got an old phone so it dies fast. Um I just really like colors that Right, let's flip it over here. Um, are translucent on sunny days. Um, something that they're not going to see super good. You know, matching the color of it to kind of what is in the lake as far as forage. Um, but then just going a little bit more solid on cloudy days, I just think. If you're on a lake where they're like dumb, it's not really going to matter. But a lot of it is kind of sticking to sort of translucent on uh, clear water and sunny days and then a little bit more a little bit more solid colors cloudy days nice we uh... sometimes i should touch on too sometimes just the off the wall bright colors work right really good just but it all depends brown bright chartreuse yeah, just like Straight when you light. go watch any you go watch any Linder show where they're talking about jerk baits, they're talking about those X wraps. I mean, they're gonna be talk they're gonna talk about the clown and pink. like the the pink and the fire orange colors, and they're gonna say that's all you need. Which most of the time, that's probably right. I was wrong. I just I get really into it, and so I've got tons and tons of different colors that I'm always messing with to. I thought you would have went 741, Bart. I was wrong. I actually have a 742. Oh, is he talking option. about that here, Jig Rod? Yeah. 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 So that's a that's a decent option there. If you're uh... not a budget friendly oh. option, but it's a good option. No. <laughs> um, we should probably we are an hour and twenty three in. We should probably bust open this box. You can let a few more look the uh, questions. So we are gonna bust open this. Mr. Tackle Box Pro Box tonight, and uh, we're going to give it away when we're done taking a look at it. And uh, maybe we have enough uh, bandwidth to use the extra camera here. Let's see if we get the. Hopefully, this doesn't screw anything up. Make sure it didn't screw up my audio again. All right, there we go. So we're going to give this away. Uh, we're going to thank Mr. Tacklebox for supporting the stream. They are bringing you our streams in high definition now. So we're going to grab our Arsenal Battle Braid scissors to uh, pop the tape on this. Uh, and then we'll get back. We'll try to make this go quicker than normal this time when we get back to Smalley Talk. So, so I think we have our – let me see if we can – our extra camera angle here to get – there you go. A little bit lower. So we'll get this thing opened up and we can kind of show some of these boxes here. So peek inside, fresh, see what's all. Man, I, I'm seeing a Lucky Craft 
Oh, did you see Are that? You serious? Really? A lucky craft and then TP box. So wow. the first thing we got here is a uh was that a 1.5 uh floating kabuki gill. That's a good looking square bill. Yeah. I am uh <laughs> I'm gonna impress with the first bait out of the box there. No kidding. Uh, a 1.5 uh, Takahiro Signature, made, and it's Japan series. It's not even the USA series. Man, JDM in there even? That's pretty sweet. Not going to lie. No kidding. Uh, this pop right here, Ray, is the Yellow Magic. The Diritsu Yellow Magic. We don't talk about the Yellow Magic. <laughs> All right. All right, next in the box, we got a Kalen's Cast Stocker Jig 38 ounce in uh, Caden's favorite color, black and blue. Uh, That's all you ever but, need. Hey, I mean, you can't complain with a uh, a black and blue jig, 38 ounce. That's going to catch him anywhere. Doesn't Rick. really matter. All right, we got a, a headbanger. This is interesting. This is a, it's kind of a, it's not a yeah. quite. It's more like think, it's not like a pivot head. It's kind of like a pivot head, but it's more like what is that bladed jig that uh, Rapla came out with Terminator? The oh, the no, what was like? It was with the plastic blade. It was like yeah. super aggressive, wide wobble. That's what the shape of this head is. It's like it's only two sevenths about. of an ounce, so it's like less than a. What's well, a little more than a quarter. That's got to be Canadian if they're talking two sevenths of an It's ounce. a rocker head, made in China. It's headbanger rocker head. It's got a four out hook. Who is? Should be what is that thing called? The shutter shutter bait. Is shutter it? isn't it shutter? But the I, head I of it. I kept wanting to say scatter wrap, but that's obviously not that. It's that's it's that. it's like it looks like it's lead or metal. And it, it's shaped like the shutter blade. Hmm. So it's almost like a, a weedless inline chatterbait bladed jig style that you could rig. Like, yeah, you know, and I think I've actually seen like Jay Siemens advertise those a little bit. Okay. Like, I think I've seen, I think it was him. Um, yeah, they got like a really unique, like literally a head banging action as it swims through the water. All right, then you get uh, two four out trocar EWG hooks. Not too bad. Some people Three have strong good size. Trocar, but they're a decent hook. I will complain that I wish you get more than two in a pack when they put yeah, them in the boxes. Almost not even worth putting it like. In or a like pack. give me multiples, like give me two four outs, two three outs, something. Right, like a little selection. Yeah. Um. Here's something. Look, like this probably goes with the headbanger. That banger lizard. Probably. It's all blacked out, so you can't see what's in. But I'm assuming this is intended to go on here. Let's see if we can open this up without destroying it to show you what this looks like. It looks a bit like a uh, almost like a Biffelhead lizard rage bug combo. Yeah, that's an interesting look. I'm sure Smalley's would not eat that. No, not at all. Definitely not that color. It's like a watermelon melon red flake. It almost like at least the way it looks to me, it almost looks like it like a touch of motor oil, even. Yeah. Or am I not seeing it right? It, it could be. It's not quite as. Oh yeah, when you hold it like that, not so much. Yeah, it's a little darker, but it does have a little bit. Of... Yeah, like in that view, it looks like. Yeah, that color, camera. that color off. I would say that camera is a little bit off in color, but it does. It maybe sure. a a tinch. Okay. Like a fighting frog lizard says AJ. Yeah, sure. I like that. I kind of like the minimal. What? How many are in here? This is a. A four pack. That's a good looking bait. Yeah. Sample pack. The hooks or the the lizards. I'm not sure. All right. What else we got in here? We got. Oh, we're talking top waters. We've got a an team arc top water slider. On there? What's that? Is that Japanese writing I see on there? Oh, okay. I just couldn't it's tell. It's a TS-115. So you got a, hundred, a 115 millimeter, which is a pretty standard size. That's like the same yeah. as a shower blow. Uh, walk to, I mean, it's a walk. I mean, it looks, it's hard to see that, but it looks, the body shape of it is, say, I would say is most resemblant of a Sammy. Sure. It has yeah, a little bit of cup mouth, but not like quite gunfish cupped. 
Yeah. But decent That's looking cool. color. Cool looking bait. Yeah. Yeah. What brand is that? It's Arc Team Arc. So I don't know if that's like the same as Arc Fishing. Oh, you know or... what? I think uh, Arc Fishing. The right... Yeah, it's it's info at Arc Rods. So same company that makes Arc Rods. Oh, okay. I was thinking of something different then. Interesting. And then we've got a Euro Tackle Finesse Metacrop. Oh yeah. A six pack, so that looks like a full pack, not a sample pack. And they look like little rage bug Ned. I was gonna say like a little different look on your Ned Ned head. Yeah. I'm more I don't like I would use this if I was gonna use this, I would probably use this more as like a finesse jig trailer. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I, I like my it. neds to have a more glide, right? Like a more darting glide. Yeah. I don't want it to really like kick and like pendulum them down, I guess. I right. Cause more... your point of you're using it is you're trying to go finesse. So yeah, you don't so... really want it to be doing a whole lot. And then, uh, you get your, uh, I guess you get your, your literature and your, right. You get your, your dibble magazine here for what it's worth. And then, uh, Kind of get your list of what's all in there. So they're giving you a thirteen dollar. Uh, so they're saying the the square bills thirteen bucks. The top waters eight bucks. Those metacrods are six. The jig is five. The headbangers four. Plastics three. Two bucks for those. So get yourself a sticker. You're getting your money's worth. That's what it's telling you. Now here's there's actually there's some detail in this which we couldn't see in oh, that. Cool. Uh, so you get the kind of the the deal on there. Let's see what it says. So it says the uh, Headbanger cup shaped zinc head. Oh man. Smart wire eyelet easily replace the hook. So you can change the hook on that headbanger, it looks like. So there's a wherever that guy is. There's a there's a way to detach that hook and replace it if you need to, which is nice, right? Because you want yeah, eventually I, that hook's gonna get caught on something and right. And you can change uh, the size for different baits and everything. That's what I like so much about that all train one. So it they suggest comes, uh, straight the retrieve yo yo or drag it across the bottom. Hmm, I don't know. So what's what's the general? I mean, I think that's a pretty good box. Like I would not like if somebody gave me as a gift and I got that in the mail, I would not be pissed. Right? Yeah. Like that's not a. There's nothing in there that I'm like, ah, oh, it's junk. Get rid of it. Like yeah, was, there, there, was, there is no. Uh, I mean, uh, a mystery tackle box definitely affiliated with Catchco. There's definitely an affiliation yeah. with like like the last box we did have a Guggen bait in there, whether you love them or like them. But uh, there was. Literally no house brands that I'm aware of, and uh, all pretty interesting stuff. And actually, most I mean, this is probably pretty standard, like nothing special about this, but that's I mean, this right. is like meat and potatoes. And the rest right. of the stuff is actually also, I mean, this is the trocar, I guess, right? That's nothing new, yeah, but like, you're not gonna see any of those. In the rest of the stuff is actually stuff that's kind of new, um, like stuff right, like that, that I would be interested that in trying. tackle being in there, like that's that they're kind of getting into tons of bass baits recently like they, i think they started out as like a ice fishing brand okay and so that's Not familiar kind of them. interesting they're starting to get into some more baits that are like open yeah. water and for bass and things like that made in russia yeah that, i've always thought that was kind of interesting about them too I do like the square bell. Like, I'm kind of half tempted to like steal this and not send this out, but <laughs> <laughs> be a good little finesse large. And these these form. actually like I like like menace scrubs and like rage bugs and stuff, and these like remind me of those. So yeah, yeah, I'm impressed. Like, I actually like this box. Uh, even I mean, the, the first box we did a month ago was good. I would say this is even better. So. Let's uh let's uh let's get this box in somebody's hand and then we'll do some uh I think I saw a question about flukes. Why don't you talk about flukes while I get the drawing ready here? Sure. Yeah. Um I it's getting to be about that time of year right now when I like to really start throwing one. I kind of wait till they're at least getting off beds before I start throwing them. When they start getting real active, start chasing things and looking up a lot more, getting close to the surface. So I kind of like either the Zoom flukes or Strike King caffeine shad. I like the caffeine shad a little bit more just because it's heavier and cast it a little bit better. Um, it's a little bit softer too, or it's actually quite a bit softer, so it, it has a little bit better action. Um, the Zoom one really darts a lot because it's a little bit stiffer, and so that one parts back and forth. <sighs> 
shouldn't have brought that up, Bart. It's my secret. <laughs> is it a secret? It's not really a secret, but it's like I don't know. It uh, whatever. It so I take some people are gonna be like, oh, I knew that, but like you just take a little spring lock. I like to nose hook them. So you put a little spring lock in the nose of the fluke, and then you, you never cast them off. Because otherwise, you're only getting a little bit of plastic and you're casting it off constantly. So, like, it's so almost impossible. You'll bury the screw lock and then catch a little bit of spring and a little bit of plastic with your nose. Just, well, like, I buy the ones, I actually buy like a bulk pack that you would use to like pour jigs with, like to put like a spring lock or a screw lock on a, a jig. And then I just take a player's bend the loop. I, I only use those because I can buy them in like a hundred pack. Um, but I'll, yeah, I'll turn the loop to make it a, a full. Sp- closed eye basically yeah and then sink that into the tip of the fluke and then just put your hook right through the i just use a just like a i think it's the gamakatsu uh, finesse wide gap hook is what i like to use it's kind of like a the traditional wacky rig hook a little bit of nice gap on there uh, somebody asked what like besides white what do you like for fluke colors White, pink, um, chartreuse sometimes. It all depends on kind of water clarity and the mood of the fish, really. Yeah, the spring, like, it's not like it helps you catch more fish. So I guess I don't know why I was acting like it was so much of a secret, but it's just, I guess it so kind of you, you don't want people to save money. You want people to burn through caffeine shans. You don't yeah, want to share. Exactly. I get it. No, it's, so it makes sense. frustrated throwing them that they stop throwing them, and I'm the only one throwing them. What I was kind of half paying attention. So go ahead, hashtag Tuesday, if you guys want to enter to win a chance at the box. Uh, but what is what spring do you use? It's I want to say it was a while ago that I bought this hundred pack. So I haven't really seen recently, but it, I think you can find them on tackle warehouse. If you just like search or maybe, maybe you can find them at Omnia. I don't know if they have um, just like screw locks, just plain screw locks. Um, but yeah, just little, it'd be like a the small size. I don't Let's see here. Let's see if there's any chats in here. Uh, the chat's broken now. Everybody's typing Tuesday. Let's see if there's any other starred comments. Oh, so what about the underhead, underspin heads? You get into underspins? Like, I feel like, I really, more, like underspins no, are like not it's one utilized. Of those things that I'm, I'm trying to get into it a little bit. I haven't, uh, I haven't fished one a whole lot, and I haven't had the when I have used them, I haven't had a lot of luck. But I know. I know they'll uh, they'll catch fish. Just need to do it more. Have I ever tried bottom bouncing an angler's choice three inch goby? I have not. You? I'm not even sure what it is. Yeah, I don't know what that is either. Pink fluke. Pink works. It's probably my favorite. Uh, what about <clears throat> like whistle jigs or Okashira screw heads or things like that? Do you dabble with those or you just stick to the straight? Yeah. Like, yeah, I would go straight to the the Mega Bass one though. I wouldn't really mess with the Northland one because it's not really. I mean, I don't know. It's you're not going to use a walleye head jig, is what you're saying? Right. Yeah. I mean, you can't. Yeah. So yeah, the, I I mess with those. Definitely, uh, definitely catch fish. Just kind of one of those things I mix in right around. You know, late. I don't like using them real early in the spring. A little bit later, you know, when the water gets into the fifties, and then all throughout the summer, because mm-hmm. it's pretty much a shallow water deal. You know, less than usually less than five feet for the screw heads. Yeah, that you know you can fish them deeper, but like they only make them up to an eighth ounce. So you and then plus with the blade, you can't really get them that deep. Mm-hmm. So. Do you ever play with big swim baits for smallies? Um, sometimes, like like not big. Like I wouldn't go much more than six inches. 
you know, but like a, like it's a, like, like a, when, when you say six inches, are you talking like, uh, uh, what are they called? Like a mega bass? Or are you talking about like a bass? Oh, tricks? Like what kind of... Yeah. The, they have I've actually caught some, it's a lot of fish on a, a mag draft before it, mm -hmm. uh, that is a super, super fun bite, but it's only, it's very situational. They, they'll like, they'll pound it, but not get the hook sometimes. And then that just tells you, okay, I just got to go to a regular finesse swim bait, something three, four inches. And then, then you start catching them really good. But like, if they want it, you'll know they want it because you're catching them on it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like if they're eating it, they're eating it, but otherwise they're just smoking it and they're not going to get the hook. Or bumping it or following it or just right. like, yeah. I wish yeah. I would have been able to make that. Like I, I, in practice, I was out on uh little bay, big bay to knock for a regional tournament like 10 years sure. ago. I was throwing like an optimum line through and like in practice, I was catching some big ones and I was like, and then the tournament, they wouldn't eat it. And I just didn't know what to do at the time. <laughs> and I was like, right. Um, so if you could only catch smallies one way for the rest of your life, what would it be? What's the one bait? <clears throat> one way. So is it like my favorite way to catch them all the time? Sure. Or favorite way? Favorite way. It's probably going to be a jerk bait. I do really, really like throwing a jerk bait. But if I had to only pick one way that I thought was going to work all the time and like I could use it spring, summer, fall, that would be a swim bait. So, but I really like catching them on that too. So I got a lot when, of favorites. walking versus popper. I would say for me, a popper is more of like a spot bait. Yep. And a walking bait is more of a search bait where I cover more water. Yeah. I, I usually fish a walking bait 90% of the time throughout the summer. And I think a lot of it is just cause I'm, you can, fish it as slow as you want or you can fish it as fast as you want so it's kind of doing a little bit of both but then obviously the popper has a way different action so if i'm fishing like a a spot and i'm or just a small area i'll fish right through with a spook and then also just have a popper ready too and kind of mix it in and see what they want better AJ just says you can buy bulk screw locks from shorty's hooks if you have a Tax ID number. Hmm. Let's see here. Just looking through a bunch of questions here. I can't say I've ever been on a consistent frog bite with smallies, but on the river, I've definitely caught some big smallies. And actually, I've caught, yeah, a couple. In Vermilion, I've caught some good smallies on frogs too. Yeah. Believe that. Yeah, I've never, like, maybe, maybe a few. I, I've not, uh, really ever got into it yeah and the river see the, and the thing is like the river smallies to me they got like those big old like they get those long right like upper yeah. upper hayden lives they're like those big deep bodies with small mouths and like yeah. but on the river they're those big long big headed like old ones and like they have no problem eating a frog so well plus they they act more like large mouth sometimes too down on the river they, they you know they live in the same spot sometimes and they i feel like they just have a completely different mentality than a lot of the fish up by me yeah and they're shad eaters and yeah. right yeah like they're not eating it because they think oh there's a frog they're just like oh there's something on the surface and they just go eat it best tactics post spawn middle july summer like what's your go-to Best tactics, um, really tough to beat a hair jig, a fluke, and a top water. Probably be my three picks. Spinner bait, too. If there's a little bit of wind. It would be silly of us to talk about smallies and not talk about drop shots. What's your go to drop shot bait? Well, and it's funny because that's like, I don't, like I was saying before, I don't have like a bait that I hate throwing, but like, and I don't hate throwing a drop shot. I, I like it, but I just don't throw it as much as like, people probably would think like a smally guy throws a drop shot. Like I just, I mix it in cause you have to, but I, but anyway, I guess my favorite bait, I mean, dream shots work really good. Um, I've honest, I've really tried catching fish on the Maxent 
the like the flatworm and like i have caught them but it's definitely not my favorite bait i just think it smells a lot i don't think it like looks that good in the water yeah and the other, um, the other thing i'd say about maxent it attracts a lot of other fish like you catch a lot right. of bluegills on a rock bass and like you catch <laughs> a lot of th- like i was skipping a, a maxent general on prior a couple weekends ago and i i caught mm-hmm. like 10 bluegills on like a like big nico hook because really? they would choke that max then so hard, I was catching the no bluegill kidding. in the mouth. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. I think the thing yeah, I don't, I, I don't mind drop shots. I just don't like the pain they are to rig up, and then the pain yeah. they are to manage on your rods and reels. Like, see, and I will say with having live scope, it's probably my favorite bait to drop on fish when I see them. So that's kind of I. I usually am never fishing the bait. It's usually like a rod I have just sitting there, ready, like dangling over the side of the boat. That I can just quick drop on a fish, because it just it presents a bait perfectly to them when they're right on bottom, right up below you too. You know, you can drop it straight down, super fast, boom, it's right there in their face. Catch them, then you got to untangle the mess and yeah. get it ready to go again. I want one more person to enter this so we can get to fifty. <laughs> Come on, guys! Come on, it's a good box. Like right, yeah. I mean, we're box. just talking it up. I mean. We didn't even have to talk it up. It spoke for itself. It's good. Yeah, and I would mention that I'll start at 51 now, so we'll give away. But I would mention that they are running 20% off on Mystery Tackle Box through Father's Day, I believe. So I guess nephew, father, brother into fishing. If I got three boxes like this three months in a row, I wouldn't be pissed as a gift at all. So I think that's a a realistic, like uh, really good option as a gift for sure. Even if you don't want like a long term, uh, I think that's cool. Um, right. Sea rigs? A little bit. Yeah, it's a good, you know, summertime bait. You know, if you got fish that are deep, just another presentation besides a tube or football jig or Ned. Yeah, I mean, Deadly just, on just, the river. Yeah, if I know they're deep, it's just something I'm going to have rigged up. Presents or if you're in the river, you don't have to fish deep. That's true. That's, yeah, it, catch them on a sea rig in a foot of water there. All right, we're going to draw this box and then we'll get back to a little more small action. So. And JP Harrell, you didn't claim your box from last week. And also, we have a, a spare box that on my next member live, we'll give away the twin to this in a future member stream. So, oh, did you see that? Bart no. almost oh, won. Bart, you were so close. <laughs> <laughs> and then that would have saved me shipping because I could have dropped it off at your house tomorrow, Bart, when I picked up your boat. So, hey, it's pretty much, it's pretty much Bart, though. It's Crappy Kev. Yeah, same thing. So, Crappy Kev. <laughs> Congratulations. Shoot me a note in my DMs, Instagram, or Facebook, or shoot an email at rich at richlinger.com, and uh, we'll get this shipped out to you. Congratulations. And I, I think you're going to catch some, some some solid fish. I don't know if you're going to catch any crappies, but I think you'll get some bass on these boxes. So. He's going to catch a fish on every every bait in that box. Uh, three baits for shallow smallmouth. I don't think that's much different than the other question. I think you're still going to yeah. say hair jig, top water, and... <laughs> well, so, yeah, for, for summertime... That will also be my shallow options for like spring. I would say swim bait. You got to have a swim bait in there. Um, even a jerk bait too. I mean, for spring, it depends on how shallow was shallow. Shallow is different to everybody, but I mean, if it's deeper than, I guess if it's between four to six foot and you're calling that shallow, jerk bait's a really good option too. But yeah, but assuming like if we're talking now through future, Right, I would say hair, yep, Ned and Fluke, probably. Mm-hmm. Those are like gonna cover actually, right, like if it's really post spawn and you're still seeing them shallow. Another one I really like is a menace grub. Like, instead of throwing a little swim bait, sure, like, crawl that menace grub, bounce it around, you know, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I used to use that a ton when I was a little bit younger, but I haven't used it a whole lot recently. Maybe I need to pick it up again. Uh, do they have smallmouth in Lake Lanier? <laughs> Honestly, don't know. I think it's well, just is that even there. a real thing? I wasn't aware that they were there, but yeah, I don't know. And I wouldn't have any advice for down south smallmouth, anyways. Tubes, I don't know what I mean. I assume you throw tubes quite a bit, tons and tons. Yeah, uh, and I mean, you'd be like, Oh, what's your favorite one? I mean, I use them all. I use every company makes a little bit different, and they're all different colors. and have you seen these? I've got about a hundred packs of those. 
Yeah, I just saw those at Omni the other day, and I was like, this color just jumped out at me as like. Yeah, is that like, is that the uh, kind of the yellowish? It's like a there? sungill almost. Yeah, like it's, yep. I don't know what they call it. If they call it, they actually it is called sungill. So. Yep. No, that's a good one. So that's you, a really you, good brand. Like you drop shot them, you jig head them, you Texas rig them, you stupid, do you stupid tube at all? A little bit, yeah. I've actually started getting into that a lot this spring. I know you've been. I remember watching videos of yours that you've been doing it a while. But uh, I don't know. You got any advice for me on a super tube? Because I I've been throwing it this spring and catching a lot of fish using it. Yeah, just just keep throwing it and don't talk about it. Yeah, no, we won't talk about it anymore though. <laughs> uh, right, running behind a, any, you got any Z mans you like? Is that like? I guess we didn't talk about Neds. Like what? We, yeah, we didn't really get into the Neds. Yeah, I uh, got about a hundred bags of the Z man, different variations of Ned baits too. My big thing on Ned baits is it's got to float. So by using Z man, you're you're doing that. I mean it. Very very buoyant plastic, if you even want to call it plastic. <laughs> And they obviously last forever. I don't remember that, Thomas. That's that's good. Um, uh, what about Cumberland Pro Rockhound hair jig? I'm not familiar with that one. I don't know if that's like a I, shuttlecock type like chicken jig. I'm not even sure what it is. I think I know what he's talking about, but I'm not sure. Is it the one that's got like little wire keepers, like a two, like just a little two little wire uh, weed guard on it and it's just hair like a synthetic hair almost hmm. that might be what he's talking about i'm not sure chartreuse is always a good color for small moles absolutely sj better better dead than ned <laughs> missing out um uh, so I would say Z-Man. I like Z-Man for things like Ned or as jig trailers where I can fish them as exposed hooks. Yep. I don't like it when I have to like Texas rig a Z-Man. Right. I would agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Good point, David. If you came in late or you want to recatch this, you can re-listen to this. Uh, search Hellabass in your favorite podcast app or you can watch it on YouTube or Facebook or, or wherever you're watching it. So You have to bear yeah. through our technical or my technical difficulties. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put that in the intro. <laughs> It gets better. Just fast forward. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's up, Sean? Good to see you. Well, I switched nights on you. It's not your fault. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I haven't, I, I've seen Nico Bates um, on like yeah. Travis Mason Smallmouth Crush, but I've never bought yep. any or played around with him. Yep. I, and that's actually a good reminder. I've been meaning to get some of their stuff because they make some stuff that looks really cool. Yeah, we touched on that earlier, Bart. We did say that the Omnia has the uh, what's the brand again? It's uh, uh, Bass Tactics, right? That's a good option for ones you can mm -hmm. buy or tie your own. Uh, yeah, we didn't talk finesse jigs. There's so many things. There's so little time. See, see what we were what you were asking me a little bit earlier. This is why there's so many different things. I mean, you can catch largemouth on tons of different things, but so many fun things to catch smallmouth on. Scrounger styles, Helgramites. I have not messed with a scrounger much, but it's one yeah. of those things that I'm always like, I need to, I need to mess with it. But I, I bought some way back, like when Aaron Martin's and like I don't know if they're this way now, but like you'd buy them, and then the lead would interact with the bills, and they would just fall apart in your tackle box. Oh, really? Yeah, but now I think the thing is now you buy them and they come separate and then you like assemble them when you go to sure. use them versus like, but I haven't bought any in a long time. Um, yeah, they definitely I've caught a few if fish anybody's on them. Got any but... good recommendations on uh, some some good scrounger heads that I definitely want to try it out. If I had good luck with any, so those are the Picasso ones, right? That he would have been probably. Been... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, what about yeah i guess we didn't to meet do you do mickey do you uh mope any of that kind of stuff i don't yeah not like those canadian guys i don't do it like that um it's kind of one of i'll rig up like a Demiki and like it'll be like kind of like a, another live scope bait you see a fish something easy you can drop down and 
put it at any depth and, sure. and catch them. I actually caught my second biggest smallmouth ever just by seeing it on sonar and dropping one of those down and came up halfway through the water column and smoked it 25 feet of water. Here's a good question from Bart. If you could only have one, 360 or live scope for smallmouth? I know it's like the new the new question. Like everybody asks you, and I if you're gonna get one and to just to start out, I guess I would say 360. It's a really good option for just seeing the whole structure and knowing where to cast. But then once you have live scope and 360, then you're kind of like, oh, well. I can still see a lot with the live scope. Once you know what you're looking for, as you turn your trolling motor around, you know what's rock, you know what's weeds, you know what's fish. You can, you know, it doesn't show you the whole picture of what to cast at, but if you, as long as you know what you're looking at, you can see the fish plus what to cast at. And and it, it almost, I use it a ton just for like making my cast, like pointing it a certain direction off the boat and being like, okay, that's right where it is. And I just look at my troll motor head bomb it straight that way mm -hmm. so if you could only have one i still think it would be 360 because mm -hmm. then you at least wouldn't have the distraction of live scope sometimes but because it can hurt you just as much as it can help you and i would imagine that 360 combined with live scope probably shortens your learning curve on live scope it does i and on it part of that's like people act like it, you know you're not even fishing you're not you don't you're not using instincts anymore and i mean you are, but people, it, it's every time you hear somebody complain about that stuff, it's always some grumpy old man who's getting, not making money in tournaments anymore. <clears throat> Randy Block. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good luck fishing the Southeast. Help you crack them in South Carolina. Um, spy baits. Much yeah, spy baits. It's, it's still, yeah, he kind of, it is definitely situational. I think you can't, you don't just use it anywhere. Um, I think I still have a lot to learn with them, though, to be honest. So I'm probably not the right guy to ask. But I, I've definitely caught fish on them, caught some nice fish on them. Do, the duo one, or you got any other ones yeah. you like? Or? Yep, the duo one. I actually, when uh, Camping World was having that big, like, going out of business, say, well, not even, which, I don't know what times? they ever have going on, but when they were, like, <laughs> selling all their fishing stuff really cheap, I bought some of those Berkeley ones um, for, like, 75 cents a piece. But I haven't used them yet. <laughs> So I don't know if they're any good, but so there you know. So if you if you book Hayden for a guide trip and he starts handing you those seventy five cent uh, Berkeley spy baits, tell him you want the good ones. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wait a second, these aren't duos. <laughs> Be like, no, I, I saw that stream. You give me the good right. ones. <laughs> you gotta give me the good stuff. No, I want your hand tied hair jigs. Yeah. That's right. Uh, nice. Um it was a, a very oh this I forgot Derek you may not be here I did star this question earlier and you were looking for a combo for a hundred bucks I want to say that like isn't there like a lose combo like the mock combos can't you get those for right around a hundred bucks I don't know uh for a combo a hundred bucks I I don't know like there's that's a little bit out of my uh, wheelhouse. I know but, it's uh, it's tough to it's tough to get them under if you were if you bumped it even up to just 150, which I know it's getting to be a little bit more, but like that helps a ton because then you can find a rod and a reel for like 75 a piece, and it's pretty. You know, it just opens up your options a lot more. I think. Like, I, I'm a big Shimano guy. Like that's the only reel I brand I use. So like I know they've got a lot of good like 50 to $80. Yeah. I will say reels. that there are some good $50 spinning reels out there, like the Daiwa Revros and some of those that are really good for 50 bucks. So then I guess sure. I don't know what, I'm not super familiar with what kind of rods you can get for 50 bucks. Um, right. But I, but I think if you go, if you can't go wrong with any of those Daiwa or Shimano reels in that 50 bucks and then. Yeah. Even the like little Sienna. Out. I mean, that Sienna Shimano reel, that's a $30 reel and that's, I mean, it's not phenomenal by any means, but like it, it works definitely would do the trick. And then you spend a little bit more on the rod, which I think is a little bit more important anyways. Definitely sure. spend, if you're going to spend a little more on one or the other, I would go towards the rod. 
Stephanie, you asked earlier. It's mainly because this thing doesn't really fit regular hats. Someday I'll show you what a regular hat looks like on this, and it just it doesn't look good. It doesn't it like it sits about like that. On I don't top know if I've ever head, seen and... just a regular hat on. No, it's it's not a good look. There's a few out there that fit, but they rarely do. So you gotta custom custom visors with Rich. There's, there's videos on how to make them. We've made them live on the stream before. Nice. I'm sure there's some good Berkeley combos in that. Yeah, I would say they probably make some solid stuff. Uh, Ab or Abu and stuff or is like he that. He might be talking about the spy beads. He could be. That's what he is talking about. You're not right. That's good to know. Oh, so I'll, I'll okay. start tying them up here. What rod do you like for blade baits? You fish blade baits? <laughs> Go back to that same rod I was talking about earlier. That 7.2 medium light plus x bride. It's a casting rod. Mm -hmm. um, that's another reason why I bought a second one because I can use it for blade baits. And, Is that 12 uh, pound fluoro as well? 12 or 14 usually. Yep. Nice. And then are you a, are you big braid, tie your own braid trouble type? Yes. That's If you're fishing blade baits, you kind of have to do that. I mean, you don't have to. You're just not going to land as many fish. And there's a really good video on how to tie those on... The Omni. I know Jacob Bros has a really good video on how to time. It might be on like the Bass Utopia or it might be uh -huh. through Omnia, but regardless, he has a good video on how to tie them. So if you're looking to tie them, find that one. Cool. All right, creeping up on two hours. I guess it'll maybe like last call for questions here. I don't know. Maybe this year finally. Hayden will invite me up in the fall for some smallmouth fishing. <laughs> hey, it's it's a matter of how busy I get. But we'll make it happen. Make it happen this I'll wear a visor when it's because when there's ice on the, the deck of the boat and I'll still wear a visor. It'll be a good thing. There you go. How about flip flops? Probably not flip flops. You gotta keep your feet. <laughs> the feet are, yeah. uh, when when the water's coming over the deck and it's thirty four degrees, I'd rather let yeah, my the visor is probably a better play than flip flops at that point. So, right, yeah, you don't want your feet freezing down to the deck. We'll just let the trolling motor do that. Absolutely. Oh, there is one more thing I want to talk about for those that are. I forgot, almost forgot about this. So, there is a speaking of smallmouth, we can't talk about Minnesota smallmouth without talking about Malax. <laughs> and, uh, there's a tournament coming up on Mille Lacs by Head to Head Fishing, July 18th to the 22nd, and they're looking to fill it up. If they don't get entries by July 1st, they may have to like cancel it. But this is a unique format where you fish like through brackets, or you like there's a qualifying. Yeah, I don't know all the I've details. Seen a little but, like, bit about those, and they I'm pretty sure they're like televised, live, broadcasted. So for you smally guys that are listening to this show in Minnesota that can swing a five-day tournament, 18th to the 22nd, I would really look, because I feel like these guys do, like their Wisconsin tournaments, like they fill up, like on the river and Winnebago and all those places, and they're trying to branch out to do something a little bigger here. So I think yeah. it would be who of us to support them. So if anybody's interested in the Mille Lacs tournament, I would check this out. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Didn't Cade do one of those on the river yeah, like Cade, last summer? Yeah, I don't know all. I remember the... seeing a little bit about that and watching because they have pretty good live coverage of those too. I think. Right. So they're something something else to watch. Bass and walleye rules. So does it? I think these are a team now. So it's eight thousand oh, dollars to win. Day one and two, all sixteen teams compete. Day three, it cuts to eight. So and it's then it's a bracket, now, huh? I think, to go down to four. And so that's why it's a multiple four-day tournament. Um, so, yeah. It is hard for a working guy and a weekend guy, but I know there's plenty of people that watch this that uh, aren't necessarily constrained to that uh, that weekend thing. So there's a lot of guys that spend a lot of time on Mille Lacs and they complain there's never any big tournaments on Mille Lacs. Well, here you go. And now yeah. you can put your money where your mouth is and uh, you can fish for big money on Mille Lacs if you uh, yeah, spend a lot of time out there.
Yeah, I watched quite a few of them too. They they do a good job with coverage. Uh, so I think it's like if you got sponsors or companies you want to represent and you want to fish a big tournament, these guys put on a pretty big show. And you can look them up on YouTube and Facebook and see what they've done. Um, it's a they, they they run a first class organization. So I just wanted to share this because I know they're looking to fill this. I haven't looked at my calendar to see if I can make it work, but I wanted to start spreading that. We'll probably talk about this the rest of the streams in June here. I'm, I'm no affiliation. There's no benefit to me, but I just thought, hey, if, if they're going to come right. branch out and uh, it's nice to get more to support these tournaments uh, when we can. So Right. That's cool. I didn't know they were going to Mille Lacs. That's, uh, that'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting time of year, too. Yeah, and MLF is coming to Mille Lacs in September. But, uh, so. That's right. Forget about that, too. Is it TBF State? I want to – what is 18th to the 22nd? Is that what it was? Just... I think it starts just after that. I want to say the TBS state is like the 16th and 17th, but I could be wrong. So this hoodie is actually an Arsenal hoodie. They actually have this on arsenalfishing.com. So uh, I can show you that. Hopefully Dan's not out of stock or we're going to look dumb. Right. But this is a, it's got a small on the front and on the back, if you can see this, am I in frame? A little bit. See the wolf. Yeah. So it's a, it says chasing wolf packs on there. Um, right. So let's see if we can find it. I wore this just because we were talking smallies. Of course. Uh, all right, Crappy Kev, I see that. I will watch for it. Yeah, so... Come on. Oh, Dan, come on. So this is what they look like. Rich. You can see them. That's what the back looks like when it's not been worn a bunch of times. <laughs> but the, they are uh, out of lar extra large. And oh, come on, Dan. Man, Dan, we were having this podcast tonight, Eric. This live stream, come on. So, hopefully, they get back in stock. You can watch those and you can use the code down in the description. <laughs> uh, Exxon Swammers, I have not thrown them. Have you played around with them? Nope, you went quiet again. We can't hear you, Hayden. This happened last time. Like your phone tilted and then you went quiet and then. That is a great idea, Daniel. Long sleeve hood performance. All right, we're going to boot <laughs> Hayden uh, one more time and then he can make his triumphant comeback and then uh, we can we can wrap this thing up. So. I haven't tried the Exxon Swammers. I know my buddy Cheetah likes them, um, but I haven't played around with them. So that's where you can get them when they come back in stock, Rich. Uh, so hopefully Hayden heard me, comes back in. Yeah, definitely H2H is big in the walleye world as well. Um, thank you. Yeah, we went a little over two hours. We, kept, we kind of went short last week, so we went a little longer this week. So uh, no stream tomorrow night. Uh, next week, we're probably going to talk with Billy Coles, uh, Smith Mountain Lake Guide Service. Talk to a, a down south guide. So for you down south guys that feel jaded, and we're talking all this smallmouth stuff about up north, we're going to talk uh, largemouth and smallmouth, uh, but the southeast, eastern United States. And uh, this guy? Yeah, I got one of these free t-shirts with my, uh, my zillion purchase. 
get this medium. Uh, yeah, I mean, drop shot's always good for Smalley's Gee fan. Um, it's it's uh it's uh it's a kind of a pain to rig and like keep manage on the deck of my boat and in the rod locker, but it, it catches them. All right, Hayden's back. Just for the say something, Hayden. Can we hear you? I don't know what happened. I can't hear nothing. Oh, we can hear you. <laughs> so here, no, he couldn't. He could hear us, then he couldn't hear him, and this has been an adventurous show. So, um, but uh, so uh, yeah. So hopefully. Oh. We'll get this you worked can hear out. me. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you. See thanks you. everybody for tuning in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on, Hayden. It was an adventure, but we we fought through. Uh, thanks to everybody that participated tonight. Hopefully, you guys picked up a couple tidbits that's going to help you suck less with fish and smallies. And uh, we'll be back next week, next Wednesday night, with another live. And as always, here to help you guys catch more big bass and suck less. <laughs>